All right, everyone, and welcome to my stream today. Very excited about this one. Um, seems that whenever I have Astro on, we get to talk about exciting new things. So this is going to be pretty cool. Um, everyone come and say hi in the chat while we get started up. Uh, this is awesome. Hey, thanks, Greg. That, that's my hope. I used to I used to do this like Friday night Pacific, which, um, as you can imagine, is like the last possible time slot. I, I guess I could have been streaming out of like Hawaii or something, but like, unfortunately it was too, that was pretty late in the day for, it's like the next day for some people. Whereas this time period, at least, um, catches a lot of people towards the end of their days or evenings, you know, good way to end a week. Hi everyone. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. Honestly, with Astro, I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty you know impressed with the team in the fact that like obviously I experimented when it was in beta, but very quickly, you know, I took a little bit for 1.0, but then 2.0 wasn't short after that, and 3.0 after that. It's like it's going like clockwork. So um, they got to be doing something right over there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'm, 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 I'm interested to see um, if the view tr transition API can help in some sort of way that I haven't seen yet. And I think understanding how Astro does it will, will help on that side a bit. The, the mechanism itself, at least on the single page app side of things, is very integratable with I think most existing routers. Like, it's it's funny the trans it's. It's the transition is the thing that happens at the end of the scope. Like you basically don't want to run the transition until like you want to block as least time as possible. So you want you want to basically start the transition when you have everything ready to render the next page and then end it. So for that reason, it fits into a very interesting slot. It needs to tap into the rendering timing when we're talking about single page apps. Um, for multi-page apps and when they get the multi-page app version of it, I think it's interesting that the browser will probably take care of a lot of this for you because they already have a mechanism for that, their paint holding mechanism where they wait to show the new page until they have enough content to show. This is just the natural point at which to do the transition. So um, yeah, I I'm, I'm very interested in this. Hey, Elian, how's everyone doing? Hey, hey, yeah, I'm just gonna go down here very quickly. CEO of HTML. I don't know. I don't know who's the CEO these days, right? I always thought Fred was the CEO, and then next thing I hear, um, Ben became the CEO. Um, he started replacing him at live events and stuff. So I don't know. I'm not serious. I'm just. All right. All right. All right. People are starting to show up here, which is good. This is this is what we're going for here. Classic trash raid. Okay, yeah, let me see here. See, this is good. Tell me when when we twitch. Okay, yeah, we got a raid from trash. Thank you very much. How's everyone doing? <laughs> awesome, awesome. With a party of 362. Okay, well, I'm just rambling here because my stream's just starting, but I, I feel like uh, I'm feeling like we should uh, we should get started. Yeah, no, like I literally just started the stream like two a minute ago couple minutes ago. This is where I usually wait for people to patch their Twitch re their their t Twitch pre-roll. All right. All right, all right. Um let's let's tell people we're live, eh? That that might that might be good. Give me 2 seconds here. While we get started. We we're we're, we're going to talk Astro 3 today. Um Astro 3 has not come out yet. Um so this is a like a sneak preview of of what's happening um so you get to be, be here first to learn about astro 3 if this is if this is what you're into okay let's do this uh quote tweet and we're live uh, yeah i'm sure you guys love me just watching me uh post uh on twitter this is i don't know People seem to like watching Theo do do that, so you know. All right, let's go, let's go, indeed. 
Yeah, so we, we have with us um, here, I'm going to introduce him for one second, um, one of the core maintainers of Astro. And more than that, he's actually co-creator. Um, he was there right at the beginning working on that original um, islands uh, approach that Astro kind of popularized here. And we have him with us today. So it is not Fred with us this time, um, which people seem to know. Instead, we're going to welcome Matthew Phillips onto the stream here. Hey, Matthew, how you doing? Oh, hey, I'm here. Yes, how's it going? Pretty good. A little earlier than I was expected. I, I was expecting to waste more time just to, uh, you know, talking garbage while people came and joined on. But it looks like we yeah. just got raided with 362 people from Trash. Most of them ended up leaving. What? So, you know, it, there's that. But, you know, for those that chose to stay on, you know, good on you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I love some of the comments coming in here. Way to rate a dead stream. Yeah. That was that was that was that was one of my one of my oh. favorites. <laughs> <laughs> if only they had any idea. Anyway, that's fine. Is this is who, who's stream with this is Trash's stream. Yeah. Okay. I was on his uh, or I'm not his podcast. I was on a podcast uh, with him the other day. Oh yeah. He does he does so many of those things, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no definitely. I, I love Trash's content, honestly, and um, his memes on Twitter are top notch. Not that I'm a good judge of these things. This is just what the young kids tell me. That's something we have in common. We've been at this for uh, a little while now um, in web dev. Um, Matthew's been a guest on our show before. Um, we were talking about um, one of his very um, novel and unique approaches to uh, building DSLs around uh, web with his framework Corset. Did, did the name ever change or is it still Corset? No, I haven't changed it. Um, yeah, it's one I need to get back to. Uh, it's been, I've, I've set it aside for a little while, but yeah, it's, it's something I want to get back to. Yeah, but we're not here to talk about Corset and we already got a good intro on, on Matthew, but Matthew can still introduce himself. So why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself right off the bat here? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, Matthew Phillips, one of the co-creators of Astro. Been with the company since the beginning. Um, I'm the ma manager on the platform team right now, and I am uh, here to talk to you about Astro three, or or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am very interested in Astro three. Um, I'm very interested in what I saw the other week. I was just playing with some of the latest experimental features as, towards the tail end of Astro two, and I was you know, thinking I knew what I expected. And then I looked at it and I was a little bit surprised, but I'm not, I'm talking about the view transition yeah. API. Um, but beyond that, um, Astro three has a lot of other things going on too, right? It's not just the view transition API. Yeah, it's got, it's got a lot of small things. Um, but yeah, view transition is obviously the headline feature. We've been, we've been doing that for a while. We also have images. The image component is now stable. See, we have this, for, for like very early adopter people or people who are very in the know, like we have this tendency to where we release things like very, very early and just yeah. market as experimental. And then uh, by the time we actually release them as stable, they feel like old news to some people, but they're actually, uh, you know, this is the time when actually a lot of people are going to start using the image component for real. So uh, that's probably one of the bigger ones we have actually. I got, got a question right off the, point, uh, off the bat, which is... Oh, <laughs> shots fired. What's the point of the view transition API if only it works in one browser and other browsers aren't implementing it? Yet. Cool. Yeah. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, let's go for it. That. Well, yeah. Well, first off, it's not true that it only works in one browser. I mean, Edge is a browser. Opera is a browser. <laughs> like, Vivaldi is a browser. It works in one browser engine. Okay, that's true. That's, that's not false. Uh, Safari did recently express interest in the API, I will say. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, and then the other thing is that it is actually, I would say, well, there's a couple things. In our in our implementation, we have fallback support. Uh, so you can use the same API. It mostly works in Safari. Now, obviously, the really cool parts don't quite work. Uh, but actually, I mean, the real cool thing about it is, you know, as, and we should talk about this, but like, MPA navigation is not bad. Like MPA navigation is good. So 
from that perspective, this is purely a, you know, this is just uh, what's the opposite of graceful degradation. Uh, uh, progressive right. enhancement. Progressive enhancement. Yes, exactly. I mean, there's some things like the video player, the video player, the video player example. That's not progressive enhancement. Like you kind of have to have that. Uh, but again, with, with our implementation, we do have a fallback. So that's what I would say. I would say that this just, just makes things better. Yeah, I mean, I haven't followed, I guess, as closely as you have or maybe others have. But my understanding is that there there is an interest in this API. I mean, Chrome is, as usual, pushing it and they're going to put it in their browsers before everyone else and maybe force everyone's hand. But I, I feel like we, we've been trying to find a solution for this for a while, like even... Um, mo mostly I like this, fo this focuses on a uh, single origin, but like cross origin, there's also stuff like portals and like other mechanisms because let's face it, the web at mm -hmm. its base are web, are websites that are served and you navigate between them. So, um, this is, you know, it's a thing, uh, <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. Like w e even if the browser, I like didn't implement it you'd be implementing this at some point. Like, I think, in fact, there was an open issue even before really got on the view transition API where um, Nate, I think, was trying to implement something yeah. like this maybe a, a year or so ago. So, like, yeah, yeah. like it's good. It's, it's one of those things where it's, like, nice that it's standardized or getting towards standardization because you, like, then you know, right? And then you can be like, okay, this is the API shape. We can move forward with this. But on the other hand, I think we'd, probably end up here anyway, probably at some point. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you want to tackle this subject, but like I can talk about our history of like how we got here. Um, yeah. There's also an interesting thing to like define what view transition actually is. Cause I think, I mean, for me, I didn't realize like what it really was until pretty, pretty recently actually. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you want, you want to start there. I think that is a great way to start because I, I, we already got a really quick question. I, another one, I'm just going to throw this out here. Um, and they're basically asking if this is like a replacement for Turbo or Flamethrower in your Astro app. Uh, I'm not familiar with Flamethrower, but it's, assuming, it's, it's the same yeah. thing. It's one of those like full yeah. page HTML swap out. Uh, yeah, there's like Swap. Swap.js is a, is a popular one that does animations. Yeah, I'd say pretty much. A replacement for that yes yeah so that that's the that's the idea here the thing is and this is the why it's a good lead up yeah swap is cool i'm getting from chat um this is why this lead up is actually a little bit important because people do actually need to understand what it is and i think this is widely misunderstood um so i'm actually gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pass that to you to to do so so go ahead T tell us a little bit about your history and like what view transitions actually even are and what they mean to you Okay. Uh, yeah, let me start with the history, I guess. I mean, I think for us, like people ask for client side routing, like very early in Astro, like, you know, like pre, way pre 1.0, like from the early, early days, we're like, Hey, I'd like to do this client side routing. Um, so there's been like ideas of like, Oh, spa mode. And then like, we'll just have like a Boolean flag in the config. And then if you do that, then it's just all client side routing. And I think view transitions came I don't remember. I mean, I mean, if you want to talk about like the history of this, of uh, this use case a, a, as like a spec, like this goes back quite a while as well. Like there was a, a spec called Portal. I don't know if you remember that one. Um, that was like kind of an iframe kind of thing, but it was a new tag called Portal, and like you could wait, you could like promote an iframe essentially to be a full screen. Um, and before that, uh, Jake Archibald had something called navigation transitions or something like that, uh, which was another attempt at this, um, and maybe even go back further than that. And that's probably, we're going back like five or six years. Uh, so this problem's been explored. So when we heard about view transitions, like I, I knew of it personally, just as like kind of the next evolutionary step of all those things. In the same way that like Portal for a while was like, oh, this thing's going to happen. Portal looks really cool. And it didn't happen. Just the way you kind of have to be with these spec things is be like, all right, well, that's cool, but like, is it ever going to happen? Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, I think that I was always personally like, okay, that's cool, but like, that's for later. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you and I talked, or I mean, you were you have been aware of our exploration into 
uh, client side running for, for a long time. So yeah, Nate started on it like beginning of this year. We explored several different ways to do it. You know, I don't know if, if, if uh, have, have, have you started working on your, your router stuff, the, uh, the island routing? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had an experimental release. We actually did it almost a year ago, um, but okay. it, it kind of got paused for a bit, um, and we've renewed research into that in the last month. Um, oh, cool. So your community is, like, aware of what that is and, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, like, we explored stuff like that, and that's very different from what we landed on. Um, and so, yeah, we were just, like, not sure if it was the right fit. We were... Like the island of routing approach is really cool because if you, uh, it, it didn't, I didn't feel like it fit with Astro very well because all of the data loading in Astro tends to happen in the page level. Um, and so without like changing how you do things, it wasn't a great fit for us. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing was like, uh, I was focusing very much on like, okay, what's the least amount I can do with each piece. So I, it was a nested routing approach and an Astro mm -hmm. nested routing doesn't really, it's like not yeah. part of the, the thing, so to speak. Yeah, not really. So we, I mean, we still could wind up doing, so I still think that's a great idea. I really like that a lot. Uh, but we needed something, you know, sooner than that. And so, yeah, we did do, do a, like a micromorphing thing, which is basically just like turbo. And I guess it was around that time, probably like, I don't know, like four or five months ago, we started seeing all these demos pop up with like, you know, you know, a lot of CSS people like Adam Argyle, uh, Maxi, you see him on Twitter. People were like building these amazing view transition demos. And a lot of them were using Astro, like Adam, Ar Adam Maxi and Adam both were. And like we we weren't doing anything like we had nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? Like you're talking about really... that movies, like they, they did a movies demo. Like yeah, that, that's seeing. Maxis. Yeah. 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 That, that's Maxis. And so they're just using pure, pure uh, CSS. We're not involved whatsoever. And so like, that's when we really started to have the conversation, like, like, why are we exploring these other things when people are already building these really cool things? Like, just by themselves like why don't we just like double down on this and like find ways to make this easier on everyone and the most obvious way is like writing a router sucks yourself so i don't i don't know what they were doing in these early demos but i'm sure it was probably i mean obviously they were demos but like how can we make something that's really like production ready so that's kind of what made us uh, i'd say shift to where we kind of landed on right Okay. Yeah. That, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty interested actually on the mechanical side of it. Um, so the okay. interesting, but, but before we go like two down that thing is, uh, I was, uh, I mean, I pulled up the spec, I pulled up the spec on stream before actually. Um, and I was looking at this and most of the spec talks about single page app. Like there's like one little section where they're like single page slash MPA. And then, Developers made it clear that it's important. They said it's even more important for MBAs, uh, which was this uh, poll from Jake Ar Archibald, right? Mm -hmm. Where people are like, yeah, I want to see for MBAs, um, which makes sense, um, I think. And But the, the actual stuff for the MBAs is fairly thin. Um, so I, I, my understanding yeah, is, point. and it's not, it's not really important. So my understanding is that you've implemented using the single page app or they call it, but the, the client, uh, transition version of, of the spec. Um, how yeah. does, does this whole thing fit into your long, how does this fit into your long term plan here? Yeah. So we, the, you kind of see that code at the bottom there, the document start view transition. Yeah. That is, that's the, that's the spa mode API. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, there is an MPA mode. It, it's in Chrome Canary behind a flag only. And it's a meta tag. So instead of writing any JavaScript at all, you put this meta tag in your head and you've essentially enabled view transitions from that page. And so if you click a link to the next page, that meta tag is going to do the routing for you, essentially. It, you can think of it like it is a router. And so our, like how it fits into our vision, like we have that view transitions component. Um, that you add to the page, that's our router. And so you can actually today, you can use that meta tag. You can still use, we have all these directives for like animation primitives. 
you can use all those things with the MetaTag. You don't have to use our client side router. And so our, I guess, ask our vision, like as that thing becomes, you know, continues to be developed, there's things that's even, even in canary form, like it can't do back button animations. Um, it doesn't do DOM persistence. There's things that, that are missing. Um, so I was assume like if this winds up being released, like maybe you use it, you know, for simple cases, but for a lot of cases, you'll still need the, the client side JavaScript. But I mean, th there are like issues for most of these things. Like these things are being developed, like back button, there's an issue about it. And so, you know, our hope is over time that, you know, eventually we can get rid of our router and you can just use the meta tag and assume, I, I assume you have everything. So in a sense, the the way, and we haven't talked about the way of this yet, but I, I, I uh, this was in your guys' docs. You obviously turned on by mode, but you were like, basically yeah. import view transitions. And then in the head, you just write this thing. You, yeah, in, yeah. Your, in, in your view, this thing could eventually that, just be that meta tag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is exactly right. We actually had that in the docs at one point. We were like, this is too confusing. Like no one's going to use this for real. Let's Let's remove it. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. So that's... we might want to like talk about like what view transitions actually are. Cause okay. uh, just, just briefly, like if you pull up the spec again and like look at the JavaScript API, kind of, you can kind of see what it really is. Yeah. So this is the way I, this way I've been thinking about it recently. Um, think, if you just think about, th forget about the, the NPA mode at all completely. It, it's really a way to tell the browser I want you, it's way to the browser. I'm going to modify the DOM. I want you to take a screenshot of the current state. Let me modify things. And then I want you to animate between those two states. That's essentially all it is. And so if you think about it that way, like it's not really about navigation. Like that's the primary use case, but you can do, you can do anything. Like you'll see demos out there of, of like resorting a list or something like that, you know, or like, you know, you yeah. have a list of to-dos and you delete them. You can use a view transition just to give a nice animation between that. So it's kind of a replacement for, um, is it, I, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with all these like animation. I, libraries, but Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, uh, it, it serves a similar role to a lot of like the, like old, like react, like transition group or, you know, solid has one, Probably, but th yeah. it does, it does like the flip. I guess it doesn't quite do the flip animation, but it's I guess it's like a similar idea in that what it, it does is it takes a snapshot of your current screw. Like when you say start view transition, when you call the function it, yeah. internally, it's like it's almost like uh, I'm just, just like I mean, the way they describe it, they, I'm pretty sure they call it a screenshot. So that, that is a way sweet. to think about it. Playground was like not loading for a second. But yeah, exactly. Like if like the what's what's the name of this API? Um, Document start, start. View, yeah. So like it's you kind of function start view transition, and then it takes a function, right? It's kind of like the procedure that happens here is it's like take snapshot mm -hmm. uh, of the screen, yeah. Then it's like call the user's function, <laughs> yeah. And then it's like. I guess it's more like so like the, you get the take snapshot like returns a snapshot object or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You, and then you like, then you like diff them or, or animate. Exactly, them. and then it's like, I'm I'm just gonna call it like this transition, transition. Uh, I'm just not okay. spelling today. Okay, <laughs> transition between from from snapshot to yeah. this res that I'm going to put here and to make things like a little bit. Yeah. Well, let's go like this. This is like the mentality. It can actually be even async. So technically it could be like, you know, if res dot then like I'm getting like a little ahead of myself, you, yeah, you know, like, like but, but, but basically you, I mean, I guess it's way simpler if I just write it more like this. Um, not async await. Damn it! I'm just not having good today. But you, you can you can kind of uh, yeah view it a little bit like 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 this. Um, so it's it literally this function could be anything. This just looks at the DOM state. I had a it's a snap show. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you you look at the you know it looks at it 
at the time you call this function, then it does whatever work you give it to do, and then it tries to shift between those two modes. That's that's what it does. Yeah, right. yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, there's more, a little bit. I mean, obviously, there's a little <laughs> bit more to it, but um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's essentially what it does. Yeah, and the the and so because of that, you can see like it's not really there's no there's no navigation in, in the logic you just wrote, right? So you you can use it for whatever you want. Yeah, there is an important point here that's not, that this await doesn't capture properly is um, between this and this, they basically block all rendering in the browser. Like the browser's not blocked from like a event queue standpoint, I don't believe, but like there is no, they will not paint the page between, yeah. between these two things, which is important. It means that you don't really ever want this to be asynchronous. Like it can be if it has to be, like if you have like an API that does promises and immediately, but you do mm -hmm. not want to load your data in this. As yeah. I said, e even in MPA mode, it doesn't start the snapshot right when you click the link. It actually d d does this in the background right before it's going to paint the new page. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah th th just a small minor note anyway. Yeah, so like the when you call a document start view transition, it returns a transition object, which that object has like a done promise on it. It has a couple yeah. other things. Um, there's a really great web. Uh, is it? What is the? Yeah, there's a, there's a great web dev article. I can send a link that okay. explains all of it. Yeah, and, and this all makes sense if you actually look at it, because like it's if you treat it as an async function then the promise of it like this actually almost works as the api huh, that's interesting I'm, I'm, I'm sure the actual internal implementation is a lot more complicated than this but yeah <laughs> so i've learned a lot about like how it works and there's this, there's the really coolest thing about um about view transitions is the way that like an element you can morph elements like you have like for example think of like a blog uh, a list of blog posts and you have like an image for a particular blog post, right? And then you click a link to go to the blog post page. You can animate that image like from where it is in the list up, right? You can morph anything, right? It's like you can have totally two totally separate elements and it will morph morph them, right? Yeah. And for the longest time when I was working on this, I was like, that's some type of like magic stuff happening, right? I was like, I don't know what that is. like, But it's actually just regular CSS, which is really cool. Which means you can actually, we haven't done this yet, but you can get pretty close to simulating this in just regular CSS, which means like in Safari and stuff. Um, yeah, if you look at the actual spec, like it tells you the animations that it does. Yeah. So what, it, what it will do is like if you have a particular element, we can dive into like the API, but you mark, what you do is you mark elements to be. Like if you want to animate a specific element, you you give them a view transition name in CSS, um, and that's how it's able to like animate between those. But what it does is it like gets the position of that element on the old page, and it gets the position of that new page, and it like uses that just to create a trans like a like a transform animation for. It. Um, so it's right. all regular CSS is is I guess what I would say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. This is, yeah. This is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's that that is definitely very cool how it can just like it basically treats them as the same element like they, they're not but it's like it's like the this one has to go from a to b like this one becomes this one um yeah. okay and they can be like i said totally two totally different elements yeah that's that's very 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 cool um and yeah i i, I think this api alone is very interesting in in itself um because you can make like really cool kind of animated demos and stuff very easily with basically browser built-in stuff. But mm -hmm. you, as we, as you already said, like to use this in Astro, mm -hmm. um, suddenly, um, well, not suddenly, but I mean, you could use it on its own, whatever, but you, to actually do the, the navigation routing part that people seem to care about, um, mm -hmm. you, you now need to do something for client side routing, right? So, yeah, Th that that was that was part of the, your work here, right? Like that you worked on that specifically. The 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 routing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean that's like most of the work, I would say. Right. Uh, there, there, there's other there's other parts of it. We have those directives. That's not really related to the router at all. Um, I guess transition persist is, but uh, the animation ones are not. We wanted so. I mean, I can just talk about that briefly, or not briefly. We have forever, don't we? Yeah. Um, transition. So one thing that's difficult in the spec is there's a view transition name which is marked to an element. Yeah. But you can't you can't like you can't just well I shouldn't say it. You can't just use a class name to like do an animation. Like let's say you want to do a slide animation, you can't just add a slide to a particular to right. like a class to the element because you're really animating on the root on the HTML element using these pseudo selectors. So and that's what make. Yeah, the view transition name has to be unique. That's one thing, which is kind of, you know, can be annoying. So we will like auto generate a name for you, a hash name. Um, if you, but you can provide, you know, a name yourself. Like if you're, if it's the same exact element, if like you, you're using a common layout, so it's going to be the exact same element on both pages, you don't really need to give it a name. We'll just auto generate one. But if you're doing something weird, which is like transitioning two different elements, like we don't know that those are the same element. Obviously, so you want to give that a name yourself, right? Um, yeah. But even even that, like, to you to do like an animation, you always need to like have a name, right? And then you need to animate the the root. That's the the view transition, old and new, uh, pseudo selectors. Uh, so like writing the CSS is a little bit cumbersome yourself. And there's right. stuff you really can't do. I think. Um, like if let's say you have a list of, of like you're generating a list from like a list of blog posts or something dynamic. Well, if you want to do an animation between the list to like the, the blog post page, like you have to have a name, right? So like, what do you, like, how are you going to, how are you going to write a CSS? You can't like write CSS for a name for dynamic data. Um, so we have a way to dynamically, we will dynamically generate the CSS for you. Like you basically just give us the name will generate the CSS, the underlying CSS for you. Um, what is, there's, there's a mention, did the, has, is the API the same that, that's in this experimental docs or have you guys updated the API here? Just so I know while I'm showing this stuff. Uh, it's mostly the same. The, the RC version has, um, like the, there's like one animation name that's changed and the, the, the event names are, are different in the RC as well, but otherwise it's the same. Yeah. I might have a link to the okay. RC docs. Yeah, because I was just looking here. This, these are the these are directives you were talking about, transition name directives. Um, uh, but you were mentioning you auto generate them. Does that mean you have to auto generate it for every single element, or like like how do you choose what to auto generate? Because I, I noticed when I turned this mode on in my previous demo, I didn't see any auto generated stuff. I didn't think I saw at least. Um, yeah, so you don't have to. So we only generate a name when you like use the transition animate uh, directive. Oh, okay. Um, so yes. like if, if if you don't if you just use view transitions, you do nothing else. You get like this fade effect on the HTML element because there's right. always there's always a like there's a, there's a root is like a built in to the browser. It's a built in uh, view transition name. Right. Uh, so you always get this fade effect by default. Uh, but if you want to like animate a specific element, like you want to animate, you know, uh, the main tag or something, you need to use transition animate slide, and that's when we generate. That's when we like generate a name for you. I I understand now. Yeah. So transition animate slide in this example, presumably the other page, uh, yeah. I guess the the other page will have. Well, have the uh, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It'll main. It'll have a main in the same location, and I guess and. Yeah, like, it's like location based. Um, okay. is the algorithm. Yeah. It's not, okay. we're still, we're still, you know, working on that hashing algorithms are cool. Okay. Are difficult. I probably can't post a link here, but I can probably update you Fox preview. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, how, yeah, Sarah, I don't know how you're going to provide that without, uh, <laughs> without posting it. Maybe she sent it to me. Okay. Uh, Okay, that 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 is interesting. Yeah, because, um, yeah, I I I was playing with this on stream a couple weeks back, and we definitely, uh, um, I I was definitely have had the opportunity to try some of these 
things I did not try animate. I was mostly focused on uh, name and persist. Um, but this is yeah. This, but I mean, the animate the animates like our our idea. Well, it, it's difficult to share animations currently with view transitions because you have to like it's basically copy and paste a block of CSS and like change the name. Right. Um, they're working on an improvement to that, but currently it's difficult. So like one of the reasons to do that is so you could like do something like this. Because what we wind up actually do is we inline the inline a style tag with the CSS when you yeah. do this. Um, so that that's kind of the motivation for this. But but you know, for a lot of the time you just want to get the default animation. Like the default animation is very nice actually. So yeah, uh, I, I I thought so myself actually. I I, I yeah I, I I've got my Hacker News demo where I got to play with this a little bit. Um, so, I, and I stumbled through, but I think I, I got I, I think we got there um, by the end. I, at least the only problem is the Hacker News doesn't have any really cool persist uh, example. I was just really happy that the header was still the header. I, I would I think the problem was, and actually I'll show I could probably show you here. I think I still have this here. Um, let's see here. Actually, I mean, it might be interesting. Um, I don't know if anyone else can. Is it possible for me to load the latest Astro? Like, is it the, the, an RC got uh, got released um, today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did an RC. Yeah, yeah uh, no, just just know. released like two hours ago. So it's it's. Uh, oh right, so this is like the kind of thing that'll be like perfectly broken to try live on stream probably, for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that sounds. That sounds amazing. That's exactly what I'm looking for here. I like right. I like I like getting stuff so hot off the press, <laughs> so to speak, that it like doesn't work quite properly, and then we can talk about it. Okay, sweet. So there's actually a, a, a new reference docs, and what I love about this one now is bye bye experimental. Um, yeah, it does not say experimental. So you with 3.0, this is this is legit. Um, like yeah, this is. Yeah, we're putting we're putting our way behind this. Okay, sweet. So so far this looks the same. So my guess is I just need to change. I might need to change the config. Actually, uh, yeah. Let's. Well, you can, wanna... we, can we see what? Uh, yeah. How do I find this RC? Should I just be RC seven is what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, so, you, you could just in, npm install Astroed RC. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Or if right. you wanna if you wanna manually update, you can npm install. Yeah, Astro. Yeah, just Astro. Some... But do do yeah, I have to like yeah. the, the other stuff will be fine. Uh, you probably need one for solid. Let me double check. See if that tag works. I mean, we can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you want one for solid. Um, All right. I'm yeah, solid. Or solid is R is RC three. All right. Let's see if this does what I want it to do. So there is a change to the, the SolidJS uh, integration as well. Interesting. I wonder, I yeah. Wonder if, uh, Do, can we talk about that for a moment? Um, just just yeah, I'm yeah. curious what it is. Well, this installs. Um, what, what what is the new thing in the integration? So all right. So you know when Astro first came out, like it was it was pretty unusual to have multiple frameworks in the same project, right? Like the fact that you could have multiple framework components. And then it was even more unusual that you could have multiple JSX. JSX. <laughs> yeah. And so at the time, like, and even now, like, it's not great, right? Like, it's, your types are going to be messed up. Like, there's, I mean, uh, uh, maybe this some of that stuff's been fixed. But essentially what we had to do is we had to write our own Babel plugins to, like, make everything play nice together. Um, and that you actually ran into that, I remember, a while back when you were, like, trying to use... Um, I can't remember what you were trying to use, but you were you run into the problem where some yeah. stuff didn't work. So essentially, what's new is like we got rid of all that uh, because the underlying V plugins are all like way way better now. Um, and so, like if you want to use multiple JSS frameworks now, it's like there's an include config you, you, for each of the plugins, and you say include, and you give it a glob of like all my solid components are in this folder. And all of my React components are in this folder. Gotcha. Um, and you and that like tells the it tells the compiler like which things to compile, you know, to solid versus React or whatever else. Uh, so yeah, if you look at the integration now, like it's 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 pretty small. It's not doing 
nearly as much as he used to. So are, are we are, should, are we on no, main yet the, or on branch? Uh, main's good. Yeah, main's good. Okay, because I was like yeah, secretly solid. trying to see uh, what the version is because it did not. Oh. Our at RC didn't help me. I'm okay. Let's try. Let's try this one. Let's see if I if I can find it. Uh, do, do, do. The, the little hat won't help me much here, but okay. I'm just gonna MPMI. Okay, so maybe this hasn't been, or no, this is just conflicting stuff because I, I it's almost like I just need to tell it to shut up, I think. Okay, because it's, now it's complaining about Ast, uh, but Netlify and, and well, we don't need Netlify right now. All right, I can't. Uh, let me you see can't confuse node. comments and package JSON. Just, node. This is, this is, this. Okay, so. Node one, is, is six, six zero zero RC one. All right. Just copy paste. All right. Wonder if. All right. Now, install. All right. Show me your config file. I wonder if we'll have to update anything there. Yeah. Well, I. Uh, should be quiet in that. I think you're good. Yeah. Get rid it's, of it's, the. It's not experimental, right? Yeah. So, get rid of that. is it just view transitions true? Is no, it still something? No, it just it, it just does it. Well, you have to use use the tag, right? Like right, but you, you don't have to opt into it like that. It's just like the default. Okay, well that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Like using the using the router is opting in, right? Because if you don't do yeah. that, then what is there to do? <laughs> yeah. All I did was I went to my layout file, and then I just was like, bam, mm -hmm. right? This is actually. I'll I'll remove this for it's a just the header. Actually, yeah. I mean, that's a. I don't know. I don't know what your header looks like, but yeah, that's a decent use case. One use case that's like not really, you know, stateful really. But I mean, I guess it is stateful. Is like if you have like a sidebar with you yeah. know a scroll bar, like you want to keep your scroll state will per persist. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and and this this is the this was the thing. The header is like the same on all the pages. I mean, I I can just was it a uh, what am I here? It's funny. I'm. I'm trying to remember if I'm using like NPM or whatever. Okay, it doesn't really matter for when I run it. What is it again? Uh, Astro uses the Vite style, right? Serve dev, yeah, dev. Okay. Yep. Uh -oh. Noticing is not supported. Uh, okay. yeah, it's fine. It's, it's all good. It's good. I, I keep on. This is my fault. I found out on stream the other day that I think it was on stream that my MBM sucks. Um, because I've updated. Like if I if I go MBM, uh, list, or list. Sorry. We we have eighteen here. I maybe maybe I just I'm so out of date with MVM that I, I don't even actually see. Look, it's even telling me that default is eighteen. Yet every hmm. time I open the window, I'm on sixteen. Is so, it because is this is the uh, the package JSON specifies sixteen? Is that why? No, no, no. Hmm. This is okay. just this is just. I'm. I mean, okay. Let's let let's see if this is just me being an idiot and like I haven't opened a new terminal since that happened. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know this can happen. No, I don't know. So, uh, use eighteen, whatever. So, so annoying. Anyways, it's fine. It's fine. I'll figure it out one day. Um, yeah, let's do this. Uh, MVM run dev. Okay. Yeah, use Volta as well. Can I? <laughs> Thank you, Pierce. <laughs> and by DevOps, it's like lit. Get, get in Working. How to use Node? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've I've been hearing this a lot. Uh, the question is, yeah, yeah, Astro is RC seven. Someone was asking that. It was just the different packages themselves have other ones. Yeah. All right, okay, cool. Now, this is started on point. Port four three whatever two one and I'm gonna swap here, pull over our example which looks like I, I actually zoomed in. I don't know why I zoomed in. I think I think I zoomed into the try and like show stuff off. But you see this header, it's persistent. First of all, I've made this right. Hacker News demo a bunch, right? Oh man, see, see none of this stuff. Just doing nothing but literally putting the like I, I did do that one other thing you pointed out, but 
if you look at my changes in this file, I have that transition persist. I don't actually even need this for like starting point here. I literally just go into my project, add view transitions, put it in my layout. Nothing else has changed. And this is just the experience you suddenly get. Like so suddenly when you're moving between pages, it's, it's like that, right? I mean, not that the old thing was bad at all. I can comment this out and you'll see what I'm saying. Uh, let's refresh. I just, I never trash. Now when I go, this is what it was before. Look, like there's no animation, but do you see any white flickering? I, I, there, like, yeah, can you explain that? Cause I was trying to explain that to someone uh, like the way that browsers have improved NPA nav. Like yeah. I want to understand that better. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been call, talk, calling it paint holding and I've mentioned it a few times during the stream and I never actually explained it. They, they do something, again, it's complicated in terms of heuristics, but actually relatively simple to understand in that they just hold the current page there. And then like when you go to render, it happens in multiple phases, right? Like the, the, there's the rendering and then there's like, um, you know, layout calculations of paint, right? If you've, if you've ever gone into like uh, Chrome Dev Tools, damn it, I'm on the wrong window. Select it, sorry, one second. So when you click a link, it's not it's not screenshotting and like freezing on you, is it? No, not to not to not to my my knowledge at, at all. I sometimes you should be able to click on another link while while it's you know in flight, right? Yeah, I I don't I try to remember if that actually makes a difference. You have to like slow down your network a lot to see if it actually will interrupt it or do something. But yes, you can definitely like the click happens. It registers the click. Um, and you know you have all that classic before page unloading JavaScript, but they they actually right before, um, yeah. Can I let's just profile this for a second? Um, I'm just gonna reload the page. This happened so fast you don't even see it. Um, actually, maybe maybe it didn't actually reload. I'll, I'll do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Reload the page. Sweet. Now. If you if you ever when people show this bottom up stuff, there's like you, you can see that there's a difference between loading, scripting, rendering, and painting. So they have heuristics based on the rendering to know that hey, the page has enough content that's been rendered. That means that we feel that we can proceed with actually painting it, which means that for something like um, a header that like stays pretty static there or like, you know, HTML that's coming in all synchronously, like it's unless like something really slows it down you, for the most part, the page is just going to be there when you go to the next link, right? Like mm -hmm. this is never, this is, hasn't been a concern with the MPAs because I click the link, they're fetching the stuff page in the background. And then they're like, the, you know, in this case of an MPA, I mean, you can see it over the network tab. Let's go doc and I click next. Like it's just some HTML, some stuff like the, there's nothing fancy here. They just, they just get it and they show it. So th that is very simple to understand. It is tricky from, you know, like a heuristics, like how do they know how much to wait for or paint? And there's a whole bunch of discussions and best practices there. I've watched some talks. I am not expert on the topic of like the specific heur heuristics, but I've definitely seen some Chrome team people do, you know, talks and get deep into those heuristics. Um, for the most part, they haven't really mattered to us. I think with the view transition API, it reopens those uh, conversations again. So I think that that might be a time to like get more familiar with it. But the, the reason I always loved this kind of thing was, I mean, I don't think I have it offhand. Um, uh, you know where I'm going. I, I can't do a whole stream without mentioning Marco. Um, actually, you know, I, I can just go to GitHub and get it. GitHub um, search. Marco Hacker News. Um, and this is not the Marco 6 one. This is like the Marco 2017 one. Yeah, okay. Let's see here. Um, this page, stream. See that silly loading indicator? See, so it comes in. This is an MPA. But what I wanted to show you is like the, the, lifting the UI sometimes can be more jarring. Obviously, like showing the loading state, you can pretend there's like a nicer loading indicator. But mm -hmm. stuff like streaming has made it possible with MPAs to because the 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 thing with a with a MPA is you're doing all the data fetching on the server, presumably. So the the paint hold is 
pretty good, but you don't get a loading indicator, right? Like you like this isn't taking that long to load. You can see the browser is giving me a loading indicator. Mm -hmm. See, but like, you know, so visually not distracting, but it it does kind of pause for a moment. One of the Mm -hmm. coolest things uh, uh, that was about streaming, um, for example, with an MPA, because again, watch this spinner, is that because it can send the top of the document back like in the header Mm -hmm. or like stuff so immediately um essentially you basically didn't wait got the html very fast and then you got a loading indicator for stuff coming in so it kind of feels like a single page app already this is no view transition api this is this is literally just an mpa um is it it out of order streaming yeah this this is out of order streaming in in this case um but like uh yeah i don't think did i not make the story stream in no i didn't okay but my 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 point is that like mpa navigation has actually been in a a decently good play other than the ability to animate like do crossfades it's been in a good place for a long time like this like whether it's like not basically not visual visibly noticeable and let's face it here even in single page apps um animations have never been like because of the declarative nature animations are kind of uh often like transitions actually can be done declaratively and stuff like css but because of like you need an extra layer uh getting into declarative frameworks that i always felt animate like back in the jquery days like in the early vanilla js everyone was like swapping stuff in and it was actually like pretty active when we moved to you know the more uh, common front end frameworks. I feel I feel like transitions kind of got like a back seat. P- part of it is fashion, obviously, but I think part mm-hmm. of it is just like um, the declarative nature required special libraries and special uses to make it easier. Um, so the funniest thing is for a long time period through, let's say, the mid two thousands and ten two thousand tens, like unless the page load was really long and it, streaming could mitigate this by giving you know like loading indicators mm-hmm. and stuff while the content like this page is actually like 90 percent content so this is like the worst case scenario picture yeah. if like you you know you had something that was like twitter uh, or whatever like you know where you like i'm on my home page and i'm just tabbing between these two tabs like this this is available this is available and then i stream in this you know like you can get you could get pretty good experiences in mpas already um, this on yeah. the animation side is just that like little thing you couldn't do before, which is really nice. Obviously, state as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously, there's other benefits. It was just I, I, this is this is the power of paint holding. Like in this case, it paint holds up until it realizes that like it's rendered the shell of the app, and then it shows it with the loading indicator and streams in the rest. So there's the, the browser is pretty cool at how those heuristics make, you know, different types of MPA experiences, you know, different, like work quite nicely that, you know, you're not actually necessarily just on pure navigation standpoint. That's yeah. So reason. I wonder, wonder like you, I've, I've heard a lot of people that have said like, well, I, I just, I never want to go back to MPA navigation. Like I just want to do client side, you know, routing always, uh, doesn't matter. I like it. I've heard so few people say this. I wonder how much of it is because they're remembering the UX and it's, it's UX based yeah. and remembering their own experience from, you know, 10 years back or whatever. Oh man. And it was bad because navigation is one thing. Picture it's like interactivity, like picture every freaking drop down list when you went back to the server and you like, you would do that. Like, I mean, that was the old experience. You'd go try. I, I use the same example every time, but I, I mean, it, you've been you've booked flights before everyone's done this or booked a hotel and you 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 know you're like they're always like what country you're going to what city you're going to what's the dates all you know all this kind of stuff and it used to be because those data sets are like too large or whatever like you basically have to select something to load the next set to fill the next the cascading drop down scenario and yeah it used to be like choose white back and then you're like oh (laughs) choose white like it was, yeah. it was kind of brutal. Um, so yeah, I, it, it's been a long time since that was the experience, but the, that drop down scenario still presented a, a difficult challenge um, because you wanted to persist the state of the other drop downs, like, like everything that the end users are already 
build out when you were going back and forth on the page, right? So state persistence, um, in my opinion, like they solved it back then, but they solved in really quite often ugly ways where you're serializing huge chunks of data back and forth. Like you'd like basically change the dropdown, then you'd have to tell the server, you know, the current state of the client so that it could render it in the right way. And then it'd have to send it back to the to the client with that information. So you, you weren't just sending pages, you're sending like the state of the application because neither side took ownership. Um, so like, I think, st I think state per persistence might've actually been the tricky part. Um, and we focus too much on the animation or the navigation aspect, um, to be fair. We've lost Matthew, it looks like. Um, hmm. I hope he will be back soon. Unless I'm the one who's been disconnected. People say something in chat so I know I know I'm alive. Are we are we still alive? Something, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's let's hope we get Matthew back here. Um let's 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 look a bit more um at view transitions. We're getting to the really the the really uh interesting part. <laughs> yeah. Thank th thank you chat for being live yourselves. Um getting to the very interesting part because what I was leading up to is if it's not the anime, if the animations are nice, but not necessary, let's say. And if the, um, you know, like, as you're saying, you, you, there's different ways to address the, the navigation. I mean, I gotta, I gotta say, let, let me switch back to the, to this, this, this feels a lot this feels a lot nicer right here. <laughs> I, is this a joke or is this? <laughs> um, but yeah, like this, this feels and looks nicer. The thing is you can actually combine both techniques in a sense. Like it, you could probably like in some cases stream, in some cases transition and like depends on what kind of experience you want. The thing that we, we haven't talked about yet today, and I think is um, probably, um, how should I put it? There's the persistent state, which is an aspect here. And then the other aspect, obviously, is that a lot of things that we hear a lot of complaints about uh, being expensive to load aren't the framework or the rendering, but like analytics and uh, stuff. Uh, like there's a huge amount of analytics code that's actually blocking. That's why there's things like Party Town even exist. Um, it's always interesting with eBay's case because like if you we we'd benchmark the raw Marco apps and get like incredible performance, but then like when you put it out to production, like the, there's a certain reality you have to face when like all the ads come in. And eBay has tricks to defer the stuff, kind of like Party Town, maybe like an older version of that, maybe it's slightly less effective, but like. It's, it's like a very different experience when you test the MPA with or without um, analytics, um, so to speak. That being said, a lot of times for e-commerce, the most important thing that matters is that it's not the next page navigation. It's how fast this loads. That That is actually what matters which means that you're going to have to hit that analytics hit the first time anyways. Um, so like there's, there's there, like the, the navigation after the fact is not nearly as important, so to speak. Just, just to throw that out there and put a perspective out. Got a question for Chad. I don't get something. Can you persist your whole HTML, but update just one thing like client side routing? And I mean, literally not updating anything except the one part of the HTML. The thing is client side routing doesn't usually do that. I have to put it like client side JavaScript framework might update one part of the HTML client side routing. Like 
and let's pick an app with the client side routing. If I'm routing, yeah, sure, I'm not updating this, but I am updating a large chunk thing like uh, of the UI. Like, I think, I, I I think the thing here to consider is routing, at least by what I'm talking about here, is the big changes. Like when you are moving page to page, there like nested routing is interesting and a great technique that we use in a lot of client side libraries because we're recognizing that we don't need to do the whole thing, only the partial, right? And you could apply, yeah, it's interesting. I, I feel like the page, uh, this view transition API is kind of like the inverse. I mean, sorry, I shouldn't say the wrong, I said the wrong. The view transition API itself has nothing to do with routing. So in, in a sense, you could do a partial change. It's the mechanism of the routing. Like you could use this with um, nested routing if the if the router only swapped the HTML partial of the part of the page is is the way that I'm going to say it. Because the view transition is just between two states. It has nothing to do with the routing itself. Generally speaking, the approach uh, Astro is doing, I believe, is page level. Um, you know, it, it keeps the MPA mentality a little cleaner. And for a lot of pages, as I said, if you need something smaller on the page just to update, you're just going to use the client side JavaScript. That's why Astro is such a great uh, platform target because you get to author your code in one sort of way, right? This is this is a uh, Astro component. This is an Astro component. This is a solid component. It's a little bit different, but you still see this like JSX in all of them. So you keep this declarative model as you go about and build your app, and then like. Switching between JavaScript front-end only interactions like this toggle and the back-end stuff feels very natural. It's not like suddenly like I need a second uh, like framework. You do, but the declarative nature and the similarities of the like JSX and stuff make this feel a lot more natural, I, I would say, than a situation where you kind of have to change the paradigm. The, the clever thing about Astro is that the shared parts, the things that happen on both client and server, are allowed to be your JavaScript framework so that they keep the same language because JavaScript's the only thing that runs in the browser. A, a different approach that um, doesn't do that means that when you, you know, like a backend centric approach, maybe something like HTMX, it means that when you switch to doing the highly, I want to keep this only on the client type interactions, you're in a different world. Anyway. All right. Hopefully Matt is on his, yeah, his internet drops and he, he's working on it. Okay. That's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I can still, he sent me a message a few minutes ago. I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to see if I can talk, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask a couple more questions. And then um, if we don't get Matt back right away, there's a couple other things that I want to talk about in the same vein. Um, okay. What are the downsides of Astro with this release? Um, can we do apps that work like Spawn now for a new transaction? It depends on what, this is where I was getting at. It depends um, what you consider a single page app. I think the answer is, and I hope that Matt comes back to, to talk to us a little bit more about this, is there's a lot of capability that comes with this API. Can I, can I actually show you, show you the, the thing that I didn't, let, let, let me do something here. Unfortunately, we don't have a good example, but what I, what I had before on this page was transition persist. What transition persist means is when I go to this, th this page and I switch between these tabs, right? Like this, this header here is exactly the same DOM element. It did not use the new one like Astro itself. I mean, let's, let's, I wonder if we can see the request over the network. Let's, let's take a look here. Let's, let's swap the pages. Okay. So I'm seeing, yeah, I am seeing what looks like just straight up HTML request, almost like a brand new page. If you look here, I am going to see the header 
rendered again every time on the server, right? So new page. So it's kind of like your old MPA. You see the header. If I go to the next one, different one, you're going to see the header again. Right here, where is it? Scroll down. Here is the header again. It's 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 in here. However, if I go to the console and um, actually, you know, we got Matt back right now. We can we can talk a bit about this together. Um, All right, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, where am I? If if I, I was just showing persist for a moment. Um, I was I was showing that like when Astro renders the new page, it looks like like it looks almost like the initial page load. Like if I go to the network here, like you see basically the the page again. But if I go to here and I inspect this element mm -hmm. and I find the header here, dollar mm -hmm. sign zero, dollar sign zero. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, put something special on for the stream like Astro is cool. Okay. And let's make it, let's just make this true. Okay. Um, yeah. When I swap between the next page, even though we sent the whole page from the server, if I go and look at this header element again, now it's right here and look in my uh, console and dollar sign zero. Look, Astro is cool is here. So we did not lose this. And you might be thinking to yourself, yeah. okay, yeah, so that's cool. Like video player between pages stays. But mm -hmm. um, it also means DOM references can persist um, in, in theory, right? Which means that see, a, a lot of client-side client libraries, like uh, what they do when they load up is they hydrate. So they, mm -hmm. they, uh, they render um, on the server and then they, they basically absorb these DOM elements. Now, some work on diffing, but they keep usually their own, like, like the, their, there's like their own references to the DOM elements. So if you mm -hmm. actually replace it with a new page and then like say, hey, JavaScript framework, do your work, they're gonna get really confused. It's, it's not going to work properly. However, if you can persist the elements between the pages, then the client component goes, yeah, these are my elements. Like it never lost the references. It's the same component. Mm -hmm. It's sitting there in space. So that means that if you had an island on both of these pages, not just a DOM element, but an island on both these pages, it should be possible since it keeps its internal references that it will be able to be just pick off where it left. If you change the props coming in, you know, that's mm -hmm. what the diff handles, then you, you literally will keep the same, even though it could be nested somewhere in the view, re-render the whole page on the HTML, you can keep that island being the exact same instance of the island between page navigations. I got that right, right? Yeah, like our uh, an island in Astro is, is is a custom element, so it's 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 basically the same mechanism. It's just it's a different DOM node, so that one just gets moved over. So what happens if if you like open up the elements panel for like the the persistent one? Yeah. Uh, there's see that data attribute. That's like that's what's get matched between the different pages, um, and that's how the swap happens. Yeah. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. I'm going to be doing so, so there's a question. I don't know if you're, this is where you're going, but like what happens to new state from the new page for like, uh, for an Island? Like does the, does the new state come over or is it not come over? Is that where you're headed? Here? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, ex exactly. What I, what I was suggesting here is that if you can persist the Dom elements the, and the page never unloads, then I mean, there is the MPA one where this is probably more complicated. You have to wait, find a way of persisting it, maybe something against the element. But if, if you're never unloading the JavaScript here, as long as the, the, the component has references to the exact same elements, I think this just actually works, unless there's some complication that I'm missing. Oh, yeah. In general, yes. In general, it just kind of works. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, ex it's the exact same DOM node. All of your JavaScript references to that are... You know, it's the same note, so. Do you know, do you know what the, yeah, so the tricky question, uh, sorry, the tricky one that I was trying to get to is when I'm looking at this and if I'm, my, I'm just going to scroll down here somewhere. Let's prettify it so I can see some of the stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into a page that has 
client components. I'm going to go here. That might be too many. Let's do 56. Um, and I'm going to go here. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I go here now, I have an Astro Island, right? This is what mm -hmm. an Astro, and I see that it's solid render ID. So it has an ID. Beautiful. I'm glad you guys implemented that. I, I've been wanting that. Okay. Um, you have the source location of the code for it, mm -hmm. um, where it's exported from. So this is all the information of how to pull the code in. You mm -hmm. have the information for the renderer, so that, where that code is. You have the props. This has no props mm -hmm. very intentionally because I did not want to serialize data. There's no double data in this example. Um, for those who have never seen this de demo, you're going to see that this, I mean, Astro doesn't have like next data, but like when salt, like it, it's, it's possible that you need to serialize data for this page, but because Astro is the one who's rendering all of these and we never pass the stories through as props, this is a little trick here. We actually, if, if I look at a comment component, it's, it wraps, um, this ma mapping that happens in an Astro component. So it never, the comment never gets any props, which means that it mm -hmm. never passes the data through, which means Astro never needs to serialize it. We solved the, the, the double data problem effectively in this demo because this, like I'm not a KDE user, will only appear on the page once as part of the markup and never as a props. Um, just my little note on the props being empty here. Yeah. yeah which is incredible because it like half the size of the output of the HTML on a page that has like hundreds of comments and stuff like none, this is, this is, this is sent only as markup. There's no, like, as I said, next JSON for this stuff. There just doesn't need to be. Um, and then, yeah, there's some new stuff that I don't see, but I, basically this serialized the state, the state here into, into this Island. Um, and this is what this is what you're getting at, right? It's like a web component. So essentially, like mm -hmm. if you persist this island, I, I don't have an example mm -hmm. for that right now. But if you persisted this island in theory, then mm -hmm. like you still have the island, which means you still have all the capability. You don't have to do anything special. I guess right. my, my interesting uh, question here is is and is Astro does like I understand the simple state persistence here. I hope pe people are still following along. Um, you know, like you, you, it's possible to keep the same element on the same page. But what about global state? Like, how how does that work in after? I know people use sometimes like the frameworks all meant mechanisms like signals. Some people use nano stores, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much people are using those things to be honest, but yeah. Uh, so I mean. I'm, we're gonna have to think through this this together probably. But how would you set up a nano store, or yeah. set up something like this? Uh, you would have your component, like let's say it was signals. Yeah, you'd See, have if, you'd have yeah. a common dependency between islands, right? Yeah, and that would have a signal that you both used or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You would you would just kind of put it out there between the two islands. Another way so you could you, you could do it is you could, uh, I'm trying to think of like, yeah, you could put it, I guess you could put it between two islands as like a singleton that just gets imported. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's just a simple example. So like JavaScript can't be unloaded, right? Like once it's in memory, it's in memory. So like we don't do anything. There's nothing we do, we can do about that. Right. Uh, so so that, yeah. That um, makes, that makes sense to me. Lot. Yeah. And another, another one you can do is, um, I, I've done this before in apps. I've actually just made a, a solid component, even though like I could have just, I, it's kind of silly, but yeah, I guess the component isn't really n necessary. I just made one so that like it actually, like I knew that it was always loaded first. Like I could make the other ones I, like load idle, but I made one that was eager and that one referenced the location, so to speak, you know, like yeah. little, little, little tricks like that. Um, I've even done stuff similar to context uh, here, but uh, let's go back to the simple case where we basically inside our client component do something like uh, import, you know, count or something. Um, and this count is from some kind of file, essentially. Like a count signal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then so that's going to that's going to that's going to be persistent even if you don't use persist. Right. Right. Exactly. 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it's as soon as you have client side routing. So immediately you get that kind of benefit. I'm trying to think of where I can do it in a, I'm trying to think of where I want to put it in a, because I, I don't want to mess with the hacker news, but I think I need to, we need to show this. Uh, I feel like I, maybe I just need to come up with like a new page. I'm going to make a new file here and we're going to just call it like test.astro. And this hopefully will override anything else that we're doing here. Um, we don't need the layout for test.astro. This is just like a, I just don't feel like starting a new project now that we have all the depth set. So um, I'm just gonna do something very simple in in this project. Uh, I forget, do I need the, the separator if it's there's nothing else in here? I probably uh, no, not. Don't. No. So I'm gonna put, we're, we're gonna make a counter component. Um, yeah, let's make a counter component. And now I do need, <laughs> as soon as I say that, it's like, oh yeah, import um, counter, what, I have to put the, the, it's above too, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a while, sorry. Uh, it's on both sides, okay, sweet. Um, import counter from, it's funny because I haven't like written it yet, from um, components counter, Okay, and or not? It's just <laughs> uh, new file counter dot jsx. See, this is the stuff you're supposed to prep ahead of time, but I had no clue I was going to do this today. So let's just, <laughs> you know what? Go. I I'm like so lazy. I'm literally just going to go here and just be like, <laughs> do, do, do. why wouldn't why not? Right. All right. There we go. Let's just move this over here. So, I, yeah, is that our already? And then we just need our, yeah, we need our import statements. Um, it's actually literally just one. Okay, let's just do that, okay. Now, assuming uh, this is all good, yay. Okay, not maybe not yay. I got ahead of myself. Uh, did you forget a client directive? Yes, I did. Exactly. Yes. Um, let's go back to test Astro and do client um, load, whatever. I don't Should we get rid of that? Fred's always always wanted to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's hard to say. I like that it's opt-in philosophically. Okay, now we, we, we've got our work encounter, right? Now... Let's take this to the next level. Let's add a new folder and call it, um, I don't know, lib. I don't, I, I'm like, this is, oh, does it already exist? <laughs> I am the worst. Okay, we have API. Let's make a new file. Let's make um, count.js, okay. And count count.js is... Um, global or something, or a signal. Yeah, it's gonna. We're just gonna do this. Yeah, we're gonna put this in here, um, and we're gonna go what export. Um, how do I want to do this? Export const. I, like I could just export an array. People usually like, do stuff where they're like, oh, "Fine, I'll I'll, do, I'll I'll make. I'll do something. Fine, I'll, I'll just do like const. Count set count equals create signal and then we'll just go export actually can I probably yeah I'm just gonna do it this way count set count I, okay and then we're gonna go to counter and we're gonna import import count set count from our lib And do 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 do. Um, uh, yeah. Does th does Astro's router have a refresh, or sh will we be making test two probably? Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think it should refresh. I'm trying to think if there's a way. To... Okay, because I'm gonna do this and then. Okay, so our counter still works, right? Mm hmm. So, so yeah, we'll, add a, a link to navigate the page. Yeah, exactly. Um, cause, uh, 
yeah, so I, I guess, yeah, we, we got a few options here. Now that this is a global store, I can literally, I could probably just go uh, do anchor href equals test two. So whatever, let's, uh, actually I'm just gonna copy this. Rename. This is, I'm just forcing this to be a separate page. Um, this one can go back to test one. Um, test two. Oh, give it some text. <laughs> yeah. I have so many of these like in my tests. <laughs> They're just like, go to, go to page two. Go to page two with a hash. Okay. So, what's unsurprisingly, without even, uh, oh, right, it's not called test one, it's just called test. <laughs> unsurprisingly, without even the view transition API, let's go back to test. Yeah, actually, did I turn off the view transition API? I probably. Did. You're not. Oh yeah, using yeah, yeah. I'm not using the layout. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's get the let's. I don't want to use the same layout, so I'm going to. The layout two. Yeah, I'm going to make layout <laughs> two. Um, <laughs> let's do this. All right, rename. Layout too. I probably should have just started a new project. I'm just like my laziness is not paying paying off at all, because um, I'm just gonna just Here everything except the slot. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, layout two, and then our pages will need to use layout two. Actually, I don't even care about the divots in. All right. And, yeah, and then, yeah, let's save that. And then layout two. And I'll just switch these ones to use layout two. Okay. Sweet. All right, here we go. Okay, so now I click it. I go to my link. Um, what is going on? So huh. I guess I guess because I was like kind of thinking that this would. Well, let's see here. I was thinking. Oh, do you know what it is? Ha ha ha! This what is the, it? it's. It's like a high. It's like a hydration error, and some people might blame Solid for this, but it's 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 it, this actually shows the thing. Look, we're at sixteen. I'm gonna switch to one. When I click this, it's gonna go to seventeen. Okay. Why? Do you know? Because um, it doesn't know the state of the counter on the server. Right. Right. Okay. Wait. What do you mean the state of the counter on the server? Well, it's not it on the server. Right. Oh yes, sorry. Yes, okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah. So, so wait. So the so like what you can do. I wanted to show this because, um. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. What you can do here is, like, technically, the server when it runs, it recreates the stuff on the next page. So it doesn't know that you're on that you've up clicked the count before, right? Um. Let's refresh. Yeah. Okay. So we start full refresh. We start it again. So now we have state two, I switch, I click it, it goes to three because the client still knows the state, but the server, when it goes and does that full page reload, what we're gonna see on the network tab here is we're gonna see- So when, uh, when the JavaScript run shouldn't update the state though, like you've got, it's wrong coming from the HTML, but we, I would expect it to- See, this This is oh, why- Oh, okay, okay. No, no, I, 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 this is arguable. Some frameworks correct the text but yeah. let's pretend now that I'm. I think Preact doesn't either. 
if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, like, like, like well, the system. reason is, let's they, they, we're going to a, a world where we do less and less hydration. So let's pretend like we're quick or something and we're resumable. We're not going to fix the text. Like we're not going to run it right. So yeah. Th so like, and this uh, we'll, we'll we'll go here in a second. This is where where I was kind of getting at. I was interested in because this. Um, button says one, even though like we know that we had updated it to three. When I switch again, it'll still say one every single time. So what we can do is, I, I mean, I don't know how this works exactly. Can I go into here? Can I put can can I put the transition stuff on the component? Yeah. So yes. I can go transition persist, right? Mm -hmm. And um, will it know it's the same? one uh yes same. i think so actually it might not let's see okay no okay no so uh it... so you can give it a name yeah that's the thing i actually don't need it the do i need the persist as well um uh you do need the persist if you want to keep the state yeah okay so name counter yeah and you can then... also give you can also put that the you could do trans transition persist equals counter, uh, but you could probably doing the name is good too. It, it doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. I want to see what it outputs. Just like curious if, if we're doing something weird here. And that work? Transition persist counter. Oh, I see. It does actually automatically go data transition persist counter. Mm -hmm. Wait, children. Okay, so it it does look like it's doing what you were saying, where it it, it knows notice that it has persist and name. So, it, I guess this is what we're supposed to actually do. I'm gonna do this to reduce the number of touch points because this probably the way you typically do it is this, right? Transition persist counter. Transition persist counter. We're trying this all for the first time here, so it's all it's it's all good. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, that oh, you looks said like you didn't save the file. Yeah. Oh, let's make sure I save both of them. Okay, save, okay. save, save. Let's right. try this. One, two, three, four, five. All right. You scared me there for a second. Yeah, I probably <laughs> I, I probably didn't. So now. Yeah, it should have worked with just the transition name. Yeah. Uh, you can put the name on the persist or on transition name. They're actually two different things. Like one's persist in an element. One is like making it part of the view transition. So you, you might not want that to be part of the view transition, in which case you would use it, do it the way you did. But it's kind of confusing. Anyways. Yeah. So this, this is pretty, pretty cool. Um, the, I think... I, I, so we started with something where the server and the client didn't match. Mm-hmm. And and th and that even though the state was persisted, this is kind of problematic. So then we persisted the islands, and mm. that was good. Now I want to try one more thing, and th 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 this this is this is my biggest point of interest here is that um yeah, I wonder how I'm gonna do this. Um, yeah, this is I, this is an interesting one. I, I haven't thought about it too much, but it's like we're in a scenario like this where we're kind of going back and forth, and then yeah, actually, I think okay, okay, this this okay. I'm 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 this this is this is this is this is not this is something that I'm I'm just kind of thinking through on the, on the fly, but I, I think I got it. I want the counter. Uh, the first, okay. <laughs> I want the counter to take children from the astro component. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I want it to be like. Um. I think I think this should be fine. This isn't even gonna do it. Yeah, never mind. This doesn't work. I'm gonna have to think about this a bit more because what I'm. What I'm wondering about more than anything is, 
Okay. Uh, right. You want to swap the children? You want the children from the new from the new one? Yeah, but yeah, you're right. I, I'm sure you have a bunch of test cases like this. I it, what I'm trying to think of is there a scenario where we render a new component, mm -hmm. but in order to render that new component, the state actually would have to be on the server, not in the client component. So you, like, I think you have to do it through, yeah, actually, this might, this, this, this might actually be perfectly fine. I'm gonna have to think about this more. Um, this, the scenario I was trying to think of is, is if the server is wrong, is it possible to cause a hydration error? Essentially, this is this is this is a problem I've been trying to think of myself a while. Well, there is no hydration in this this case, right? It's already hydrated, right? Because uh, it matched it matched to the same component. If yeah. a new component, it, yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, this is this is this is if if I, yeah. So this the pro, basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I there's mean, a you you saw you you see if if I if I did not have persist counter you kind of get back to this again like if you pretended that on each page you had a like let, I'm gonna just do this for fun I guess I, I don't know how much fun this is but if I made like other component dot JSX right and then I went export um I went export default so this uh, function, function, whatever. I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about naming it. Right. And this one was like import, um, uh, was it count from, uh, what was it? Dot, 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 slash lib slash count. And this one was like, Um, something like this, where it's like count bigger than five. Div. I want to do something span count and then Uh, I don't know, H1 count. I, I've never made this demo. This is just me playing hypothetically. <laughs> I hope people uh, can are patient enough with it. Yeah. You know what I'm doing, uh, right? I think I know what you're trying to do, but I, I it's 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 an interesting idea where if if essentially um, one of these pages has some other what some other component or no it's other component other component import other component from do you want that one to be uh, hydrated it's not yes yeah i should do that other component And then yes, I want to do this on client load as well. Simple. All right. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, as you can see, when I updated it, that that you know it went between the two different things. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm wondering is if I make this bigger than five first and then click what happens. Um, so it's getting the same count, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, it's actually busted. Actually, it's not that it's actually, um, this is a solid error. It's not your error, but it's, it's basically, it can't hydrate it because the initial state um, of the new component doesn't match the global state on the on the, on the like the the thing right like essentially because right. like this component has never been rendered before and it reads 
from the the global the this global state mm -hmm. the component that gets rendered on the server gets a one here so it renders it as if it's one there's nothing to persist so it sees the the that tries to hydrate it when it goes to hydrate it it gets the new higher value of count the html that it tries to walk to hydrate doesn't match the html that's been server rendered and then you get a hydration mismatch error um essentially is what what, what happened here um this this I, I i don't spend too much time here this is probably the hardest part about persisting state so you'd just, have to You'd have to send the state to the server with you, I guess. Is that is that what RSC does? No, our, our RSCs do is that they never render a client component on the server again after the initial render, so that it's impossible to read from a context that essentially like a global state. Like any any client component can only be server rendered once, and then after the fact. Well, they, this one was only server rendered once, right? The the other component was only server rendered right. the second time. Right, but it, 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 yeah, so it's only it's it's only on the initial page load that they server render client components. Any future navigation client components can't be server rendered because they could read from state that mm. might have changed, uh, which means that it could break hydration. Uh, <laughs> To just turn off hydration. Well, this would break. We could do, yeah. Resumability. Could do, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, you, this could break resumability as well. I mean, it's not it's not hydration. It's it's the fact that the the, the client framework thinks it knows how mm -hmm. it works versus not. As I said, this I had to think really hard to <laughs> find the scenario to actually break it. I I, I think for a lot of uh, basically this only happens when you have global state. Um, and conditionals based on global state and client components that could change the rendering such that hydration would break. Is there a way to tell solid to like update state anyways? Like, is there a to well, opt, opt out of this? <laughs> well, the problem is the server, like the server would have to know, like the client has the updated state. It's actually the server that's out of date. Yeah, but it becomes a mismatch because well, I guess it's just a mismatch because solids like this is not the same, right? Exactly, right. Yeah, and this would be actually true of every every uh, client side library because they that's how they hydrate. They have no clue. They have to like assume that the state is a certain way. I think, um, or yeah, it's 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 an interesting one, right? Because like even if you're something that serializes all the server state, then the client state and the server state would be in conflict with each other. Um, I ran into something with this with Preact one time. I can't remember what the scenario was, but I feel like they have a way to, I don't know, to, to tell it like during hydration, just like use the client state, override what, what the server state was. Right, like right. So like the essential idea is like, at that point, it's just like, don't hydrate, just client render it. Um, Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of wondering if like, this is one of the things I was thinking of in my head, it like was if it was a possible that every, like, yeah, actually, you know, we, we can see how, how, how that would work in practice, in a sense, in a micro sense, because we can go in here and we can be like, uh, where am I? Uh, test two, we can, if I do this, we're not going to have oh. a problem. Problem, Are you right? saying React does not server render on subsequent navigations? Yes. The client components. Yes. So what what happens if what happens if there's content to be displayed? The the user won't see it until the JS runs, I guess. Yes, exactly. Uh, but okay. they, they assume that like since the page is already like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it defaults okay. back. So if I go to That's test nice. two now, it, we it, could it, do that. Too, it works. Yeah. It works. Right. The only mm -hmm. problem is now is when I render it initially, we get the we get the the client render right. So it's almost like a toggle mode in a sense where it's like if it's a subsequent navigation, it, 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 like it would be because the beautiful thing here is if you think let, let, if I client only the counter on the on on this one, let's pretend we always mm -hmm. start on test test one, like we always start here, and if I do this, it's still going to. Yeah, like this one. 
yeah, I, I, the client render timing is awkward, but what I was trying to get at is it's still going to, uh, it's not going to work back though, but whatever, it, like it could work back. I, I'm saying there, there is a possibility, like this client only doesn't in fact, I don't know if, if it would, it, it's possible to make this not affect its persistence because you're not going to use this anyway. Like, mm -hmm. like on the second navigation, spe technically speaking, this is already here. So like if this was client only, like you're just, in fact, rendering it on the server is almost a waste because you're going to only use it, the, 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 the client version anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Th sorry. The reason, the reason this came up is this has been exactly the problem that I've been wrestling with for like the last like month. Um, cause I, I, I was like, I was like, I, yeah, I, when I got back into this thing, I was like, man, what a, well, well, the context API is going to kill me, <laughs> I, but it's actually not specific to the context API. It's actually specific to, to global state. I, I, I think there's ways to solve this. It's just, it was one of those things that, uh, um, I, I kind of hit. And yeah, I don't know if we should do this, but I mean, in theory, like, like we do a fetch request, we could send a header or so I don't know how does, I don't know how, how react is doing it, but like set a header or something yeah. that tells it don't render the, don't render the, uh, framework components. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, that's what we've been talking about doing with, um, with, with, uh, the, the work we've been doing with the islands right and solid start. Um, yeah, this, this is, this is a topic onto itself. In fact, I've, I've been, th this has, uh, even crazier implications that go beyond the Astro case. I just want to see if, like, if this was a zone where you'd like maybe hit at all while testing this or whatever. Um. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> nothing this complicated yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. No, I, I've been thinking through the problems of like what I mean. We don't we don't rerun props either. Like I, I've I haven't like thought through all those things yet. Um. But. I mean, all that stuff's going to come up. It's like oh, we okay. Children, we don't really do. It's really as stupid as you think it is. It's like literally. right, right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, th this is already such a big win for the persistent element aspect of it. Like, because the thing is, people who are building MPAs today aren't expecting any of the stuff I'm just talking about, it, and what they get is just a. a Right. You know that thing they couldn't do before, which is the persist the elements, the video players. They can you can take uh, you can take that zone of what you would build an MPA with today, and you've just expanded it. You've just gone okay. Before some people would be like, oh, I need to use React or Svelte or whatever view um, for this app. What you've done is you've you've moved that bar a little bit further along here. That thing be like, no, you know what? We don't need to like use that for this. We can we don't need to use a full client side router. We can just persist, you know, any yeah. elements we need. We can have video players. We can have a lot of interactivity. The transitions are smooth. They look nice. Basically, this is like a free upgrade to any right off the bat to anyone who's already um, who's already been using Astro, and it makes Astro even more appealing. Um, for the next zone, uh, like just beyond where people are using Astro today, that's that's the way I I probably view it. Do you yeah, think that's a good one. like yeah. you're talking about like like Theo, you know Theo's uh, graph he has of like Astro's good up until here. It's like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you just <laughs> yeah, you, you, you've kind of pushed it just a, a little a little bit further, right? Um, exactly. I think I think that's the the thing here. I'm obviously like digging deep on is there a way to make server components in a way that's actually optimal. Um, and that's, that's a much, that's a different problem a little bit. It does have you hit stuff like this, but yeah. yeah um, I'm also trying to think about it, like in terms of like, what is like, again, the goal of, for us is like, get rid of that, that router eventually. Like, yeah, I don't know, like, like I could see the MPA router doing DOM persistence, kind of like we're doing here, yeah. but yeah, I don't know how far they're going to go with that. Right. Yeah. Especially if that's the goal, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't think it. I, I'm not sure it ever gets to 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 here, so to speak. What I'm like talking about, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely interesting nonetheless. I mean, uh, these are these are just the kind of it, these are the kind of as I said, a zone that I was kind of thinking of. Um, 
uh, what else do, is there anything else I want to talk, we want to talk about on view thing? Cause you, you mentioned, I, I think we got sidetracked and then you disconnected. You said there was new features for solid and Astro three. And I was, I was curious about those. Uh, well, it's not new feature. It's, it's really just that we're using Vite plug in solid. That's really right. Right, 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 right. So does, does Vite have like a, does you all have like a, um, a fast refresh? Yes. Yeah. We, we have something called solid refresh. So yeah. Solid so what you're saying is the each island framework now can use its own HMR mechanism. So like react fast yeah. refresh and right not. Yeah. So like fast refresh, we had to do a little bit to hook that up. So we might need to do that for solid as well. I'm not sure I'll have to look into that, but yeah, basically we're just using the built-in plugins. Like if you want to, uh, if you want to use multiple JSX frameworks, there's like a glob you can, you can provide it to tell it uh, what, um, you know, which files are for solid, for example. Uh, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And th th yeah, getting closer to what we actually use and what we actually do just makes all the other pieces work nicer together. Like, makes it easier yeah. to integrate. I yeah, mean, no, we, we we had a lot of bugs over over time of like you know like oh this solid component doesn't work with us, and it was all due to the fact that we were like doing our own Babel compilation and stuff. So now I would expect like full compatibility. Like if you look at an integration, like it's pretty small. It doesn't do that much. No. On its own. No, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, just I'm all about kind of lifting that out. Um, I, I I do know some of these features that are coming in in uh, Astro three. We, the view transitions, as I said, is the big highlight. I, I think this is going to be a game changer for a lot of people and their uses of Astro. But uh, I I got a note here about an image component. What what's up What's up with that? Uh, well, we've had an image component for a little while since 2.1, but it was an ex it was an experimental mode. Um, that's been updated uh, throughout. Let me look, check my notes. So we have a couple of things. New well, first off, it's stable. That's the main thing. Like we switched over to Squoosh now. Or not right. Squoosh, uh, Sharp, excuse me. Um, Sharp now runs basically everywhere. Like Sharp is running in, um, in Stack Blitz now, so it does that. Uh, I image, sorry, go ahead. I just sorry. I just love having access to the like the new version of the docs, which means that yeah, I yeah, yeah. We, we have all the stuff, all the experimental stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Um, like you can you can optimize remote image in that, in, images now. Um, like it has full support for like for sales image service, so you can like do whatever you want if you're using that. Um, so this so ties in at the, even the adapter level. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. You can use, you can, there's a, there's an API to like use external image services so you can use like for sale and there's a few others. Um, what else here? The uh, Astro image iteration will no longer actually sort in version three. We suggest removing it. So, okay. So there was an old, there was an old integration we had from the 1.0 days. That's just going away. It's all built in now. Gotcha. Um, we optimize like markdown images by default with that. Um, you can you can define like our content collections as a way to like where you it's like a way to organize your markdown and stuff, and you can define a uh, part of your front matter. You can like define an image, like in your front matter, and like that will get optimized. And like you can specify like what dimensions it should be. Like so, if you have like a, a social image that you have in your front matter, you have to have the right dimensions. If you don't, you'll get an error message at compile time. Like it's type checked. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, so it's just really, really, you know, updated and basically has, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really nice now. So everything yeah. except for picture, which is something we're going to work on soon, but it's, it's really good. No, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I think this is becoming very, very, um, standard, like images, Spectre, like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's an expectation of like what makes a meta framework, um, pretty yeah. much at this point. Uh, I'm still looking at an old image. So if I make the number smaller, it's actually a newer one, four one six six. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that. I, I trust Sarah. She. she yeah, Sarah's. She, a, yeah. she knows what she, docs, she's doing. Yeah, Sarah's our docs lead. She's great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I was just looking at the upgrade. Uh, this, I guess, this is a good high level understanding of what was going on here. Experimental flags removed. Um, some breaking changes. Um, sounds like nothing major. Remove support for Node 16, we already hit, so everyone saw that. Um, yeah. 
we I, 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 it's, it's 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 it is a good thing. I removed no support for Node 16 myself recently. It just the 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 browse the node is coming along so quickly to catch up with the other platforms and if you get rid of 16 there's just so many like bad missing polyfill type scenarios that just go away like it's just like something like yeah. we're so close to getting like almost the same uh interface apis working on all the platforms yeah it's like i think all the fetch stuff was not on global in 16 and it is now so we can we got rid of I think we got rid of our polyfill almost completely now. Um, yeah, this is all deprecations and stuff. Most of the stuff, like we tend to deprecate in one major and then remove in the next. So a lot of this got stuff to. is like pretty old. Yeah, Astro um, Image. Markdown removed because you guys have a whole other way of doing markdown, I'm gathering. I yeah, we used to have a markdown component. So you could like write markdown in your, um, like just inside of an Astro component. Right. And which was cool, but it does not, it's not compatible with SSR really, like to yeah. like parse and, and stuff markdown at runtime. Yeah. So just import an MD file. Yeah. No, this is great. Yeah. No, I, I, I did run into this Astro processing my MD files while I was trying to do something else. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can turn uh, it off. Yeah. I, I, I did manage to. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, yeah, as you said, a lot of deprecations and whatnot. I think people probably kind of go through those one by one, but it sounds like most of them are actually removals of stuff that happened before. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think. There was, there is a, I have a note here about supercharging rendering. I think that could be a cool topic. What what okay. what, what what does it what what does it mean uh, in terms of Astro rendering performance got even better? Is that possible? Yeah. Well, actually, our rendering performance was, like, not... It was, like, okay before. Like, I don't know if you ever saw, like, when... Uh, is it someone from the Quick team did, like, some comparisons? Of right, right, yeah, yeah. Performance? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve was, was working on, on that. Uh, I, I, yeah. I remember that. He did a benchmark. Um, there was a lot of data all over the place on that one. Um, but Okay. Yeah, ours, <laughs> ours was, like, okay, but it was, like, kind of middle of the pack, so... Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mar oh, Marco. Marco <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll, if we'll win. I don't know. We haven't yeah. done, done comparisons, but... Uh, so, Bjorn, uh, who's on the V team, he's really great. Uh, he worked on this. Um, so, I think we have... I think... Let me... I have, I have some notes here. So, he says that... In Astro Pages, if you have 100 JSX, JSX expressions and 50 components, uh, you get 75% improvement uh, versus 2.9. Do you have something? Uh, so think, do you have something to again, share, or is that just a number? No, it's just some, that's some notes that I have. We're, it, this will probably be in the article. Like in okay, fair enough. So, but 50%. Uh, yeah. That was 75%, and like Sorry. that. That's a that's a high scenario. So basically. The low scenario he had was like 30%, and like the high scenario is 75%. So that's 100 JSX expressions, 50 components. Uh, okay. So it's like it's like a linear it's like a linear improvement. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, like we knew what the problem was. Like when we did streaming, like we used AC generators everywhere. So um, all of our like all of our core rendering stuff is you know to do streaming is just uses generators. And, you know, as, as people know, those are like not super performant. So that's really all we did is we ripped those out, um, got rid of any async functions that didn't need to be async, that kind of thing, just kind of tightened up the code. And so, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in like actually doing some comparisons now, doing some benchmarking, because I'm not sure where we're going to land, but uh, we should be in pretty good shape uh, for rendering now. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, that's 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 great. I I've never had any problem with the Astro rendering. Um, to be fair, um, yeah, because and you know that I put it through s some paces. Like I just did. Some, I mean, it was a lot of the same components, but like I I would like this page was yeah, pretty yeah. pretty large, and this is two hundred fifty five com uh, comments. I like to load pages that have like fifteen hundred comments and. <laughs> Astro never had any issue there before, so I'm uh, I'm excited to see even additional uh, improvements there. Uh, would that be a single component with like how many components would be on a on a page? That's kind of where the, the measurement is. 
Right. If it's a low number, then it probably doesn't matter. But is each one of those a component? Yeah, well, it's it, it's recursive. So, like, what oh. you, you... This is actually an island. Every one of these is an island that, like, there's a comment component that draws itself and its children, and then it has an island in it that it passes its children through the island. So, like, uh, we, we actually have this, right? So, you actually, this, you actually are probably getting close to this, like, high number, actually, then. Yeah, because it's literally comment component, toggle, comments Mac, Astro self. Like, it's, it's a recursive um, number. So, when I say 1,500 comments, that means there are uh, probably about 1,000 islands and uh, it's like one degree back up, you know, of, like basically there's one less because like they, they, they fan out, so to speak. So like it's, yeah, it's, it's probably maybe like 66% of the number of components, you know, like, like it's a little bit less. So if yeah. there's 15 other comments, it's probably like a thousand components. Yeah. So actually you could compare, I don't know if you want to do that right now, but <laughs> if you were to like compare the, the load, I, I would, I would think it's going to be better now. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I think that's interesting. I don't think it's going to show up on a uh, like the, 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 this test specifically was designed to punish people for um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, heavy serialization costs. Astro's serialization in this case is actually really nice, but like 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 Solid's version and like uh, Quick's version and Marco's version, you don't do double data. React server components, double data. That they yeah. get hit a bit, but they even they save on hydration, but they get hit on the double data pretty hard. Single page apps, yeah. double data plus hydration, and it's just like death. So, yeah. um, my gut is the, the the at least on the test I was using the the I, although I mean I will test it probably later. The the variability on the the um like run to run will probably make a bigger difference in the speed increase. I mean, that's fair. Hey, would you, would you mind flipping back over to your editor? There, there's one other improvement that is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, astro.self is type checked now. I don't know if you can tell that, but, um, yeah, do, are you using, do you have a, do you have a type for your props? You don't have a type mm, Yeah, props. I did this one. Okay. I did this one in, in JSX. I mean, I could, okay, no, that's fine. I mean, that's okay. I'm, that's I think, that's a that's a like not that many people use astro.self like I've hardly ever seen anyone using it and it just I just happened to notice that you were so uh, yeah so that should actually be type check so you should you should get like error messages. The funny thing is like I, I wonder if I have to change my TS config to do something special now. I never actually tried yeah, the type maybe. because it's like complaining to me that I can't use JSX unless JSX flag is provided. So like, am I supposed to do something along the lines of like? Uh, like top level, can I just put in like the typical oh, no, JSX preserve uh, JS? Oh, what is it? JSX import source not React. Um, <laughs> like so, you that. can extend ours. Is what you can do. That's one possibility. Okay, and then oh, the, uh, it's funny because I have all the code for the types in like other versions of this. Um, I, we can still show this because we know that we are taking comments and uh, actually there's a, uh, this is one of those things where there's, um, I, this is one, of, basically I don't want to use the function form. I want to, because the way the freaking, um, <laughs> you, you know, I don't know if I can just do this um product. i don't think either of us are like ts experts is what i'm, I'm what i'm uh <laughs> yeah it's it's more like i what i have to do i think what i have to do is this and then e export uh default toggle and then i come on and then and then essentially um this type for this should be um it it's like component parent parent component parent component from solid js with um okay. what's uh, the prop uh, the what's the prop that oh actually you know what this, this exactly Common, sucks. Right? 
the this uh, this this section oops, this 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 sucks anyways it's just you're you're right i i, I, I because the problem is self sorry i i was i was typing the wrong component now that i think about it because self is actually the astro component right so how i would have oh, to actually okay. I, I you can just add it no you can just add an interface here actually just do interface props um and it picks it up or yeah capital p props yeah okay yeah this this is this is my my learning here and so you, you see you're getting your so now, now your screen, I, I yeah now comment unfortunately is a is an object with a bunch of properties on it but we can kind of figure it out let's go string sorry like <laughs> yeah okay let's just whatever just string um what else do we have here time, time ago, ago which is a number i think and then we content. have content, which is, is a string of HTML. Or yeah, 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 exactly. Content, which is string. But yeah, this is like eating my vegetables. And then comments is is a, of that thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which means like <laughs> <laughs> you got to turn that into type. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm. This is. People are like laughing probably in chat. Either <laughs> yeah. that or they're leaving, right? They're like, well, what, are, what, are we, what, are, what are we doing? We're these idiots, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is... <laughs> um, okay. Uh, comment array that may not be present. And then comment is a comment. And then... All right, cool. There we go. Okay. And then okay. what you're saying is, yeah, exactly. That is a comment. Yeah. So if you omit that, you should get a type error. Can you, you want to try that? Yeah. yeah or like not... misspell it or something. Hopefully. Did I say that it was? Let's try. Hmm. It's funny. It did. It did do completion for me, but it. Or... Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's only completions. Maybe it's not diagnostics. Okay. Let me just. Uh... Do the the classic here. Was it? Was it? Uh, TypeScript. Oh, restart. Yeah. Restart TypeScript servers. The, yeah, I do this a ton on 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 my other computer, but this computer I never really bother. Why am I even not seeing it restart? Reload also also works like reloading the editor. Uh, reload window, I think. Alright. It's possible that it's possible that the editor had a change to make this work. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, um Anyways, it, that, I mean I, I actually at least see <laughs> the, the the stuff here. Um but yeah, okay. Um very, very cool to see. Um all right, sorry about that. I <laughs> got got sucked into that one a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, the rendering improvements obviously very very interesting. Um, what else do we got here? Um, I, I I'm gathering most of the other stuff is a mixed bag of small features. Um, I noticed that there's some talk about uh, um, like yeah. adapter improvements and and whatnot. Yeah, everything everything else is mostly uh, small. Um, yeah, a lot of. A lot of, I mean, there's a lot of like small things though, like HTML minification by default. Uh, we have CSS inlining, like automatic CSS inlining. Like if it's below, I can't remember what it is, but uh, Vite has like a inlining threshold. Like we'll actually inline your CSS, which is actually very useful because in Astro, the way it bundles CSS, it's per page. So if you have like a component that's used on several pages, that becomes like a chunk that's shared between the pages. And so if you have a lot of them, there's a potential that there could be like a whole bunch of shared chunks, uh, but like for a particular page. So when those are all links, that's going to, you know, block um, quite a bit. So, but those could be very small chunks. So now the default is auto inlining. So like if you have a large chunk, like you have your tailwind or whatever, that's going to be in a link. Or if like you know, your main, your main page chunk or main shared chunk, that's going to be in a link, but everything else, all those little small changes will be in line. So that one's really nice. Nice. Uh, um, yeah. Like I said, HTML is minified, which is pretty nice for uh, SSG anyways. 
Um, we switched over to use like a hash for our uh, scope styles. Uh, they used to be a class name. Uh, makes things a little bit easier, like to read. Uh, yeah, that that that's kind of what that section was about. Yeah, the, okay. the big the big three things are definitely view transitions, uh, the image component, and then like fast refresh and like all of the uh, um, all of those GSX framework uh, integration improvements. Makes sense. Okay. No, I I mean the that's enough. The view transition API. I, I it is still I'm I'm very I'm very stoked about that. It's I, I think it's a, I think it's a game changer. The fact of how easy it just as you said like progressively enhances the story is really quite noticeable. Um, that's most of what I actually have today in terms of uh, what we want to cover on Astro Three. I think um, I give the audience a little chance to ask any more questions they haven't been, but they've been pretty active in here asking as we've been going. So I'm gonna scroll yeah. up so I can see if. Um, uh, I saw, I saw a few. Yeah, I think there's some questions around the view state, the view transition API. Like people, like when, when you're away, they're they're like, is it possible to make it like re-render the page on the server and then have it only update like a small portion of the page, kind of like simulating something similar to their client side routing. That was like kind of the, the question. But I think the thing is persistence. Once you hit something that persists. Mm. everything below that persists too, oh right? yeah 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 right i mean it like literally just grabs the dom node and, and sticks it over that's how it works now i think there's there's a lot of open questions or like stuff you brought up is like what should like what should we do if there's a difference between them okay i okay you know what before i actually want to get into the view transition stuff i kind of got like sidetracked in our thinking because um we um how should I put it? Uh, you, you lost connection and then I was kind of like rambling on. But, and, I, and then I was like, I'm on the test of case. But what I'm actually interested in doing, I, I, I showed this previously on stream, actually. Let, 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 let me show what I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to our simple, you know, Hacker News example here that we started with, right? So we got in our nice transitions, everything's nice. And I had noticed when I went to the network tab that when I looked at the JS and I ignored my extensions, i.e. I opened a new incognito window and did this, um, that, uh, yeah, sorry, this is something I really wanted to do, uh, network, sorry, JavaScript, refresh, that I had a new JavaScript file that I had not had before. I, I, I actually did a production build. This is not production builds, so that's mm -hmm. probably... It, but essentially, this page in actually, you know, let's let's do a production build right now. Let's just do npm run build, and then npm run preview. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, this page never had any JavaScript on it before because there's no mm -hmm. islands on it. But now it has this 5.5 kilobyte thing, and when I go into here, then it, it obviously loads solid. And, uh, you know, like, I don't think this is all gzipped, but um, I, I imagine this is actually, can I see the, what, what's it? it uh, is, yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think it requests gzip, gzip, but it doesn't respond gzip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, it, so it's not even five kilobytes. It's like literally, it's probably like two kilobytes. This two mm -hmm. kilobytes I'm gathering here is the router, right? This is the new piece. Can, can we talk yeah. a little bit about, about how this router works? Um, huh? Huh? Sorry, I, I forgot to ask this before, and I was really curious because I asked, I, I kind of hinted at it when we were talking before a stream. I'm like, does this use Micromorph? Is it doing a diffing? Like, yeah. how does the persistence w work? Because the, the browser support persistence, or is this something you implemented? No, we implemented that, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's as simple as you think it probably is. It, it fetches the next page, yeah. it par parses it with DOM parser. Uh, it diff it uh it it has to diff the head which at first like my first implement the first implementation was like i literally just replaced the document element and that was it <laughs> and then i was like oh no this is not like this causes a bunch of problems so for like the head it leaves link tags that are on both pages it leaves them in so that you don't get a flash yeah um otherwise it replaces everything um and then the body it literally just flips the body if i remember recall correctly 
and then it looks for those persistent nodes on the old page and, and moves them over onto the new oh, page. Okay, this explains something for me because I, I, you know how I persisted the head. I was like made a big deal about persisting the head, and I was like, I was like, what? I, I could tell it was the same element, but then when I went into here, right, and I went rendering paint flashing and I was switching, I could see the head like paint head flash. Element? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like even though it was persisted, I could see paint flash, and that's because it's parents you, or it's because well, I they, think it's right? it's because you swap the body and then you put the and you put the existing element in uh, into yeah, it. Yeah. So then, yeah. it, like even if it's the same element, it's just it it's getting it's kind of painted, yeah. it's re repainted again because like when I was doing it's the, temporarily, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th that explains a lot. Okay, yeah, because I was this. This was my little demo because I was doing the 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 persist the R kind of routing one right, and it was doing this right. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, with the, with the similar HTML diffs, but okay. So let's continue. Uh, that helps me out. So then you replace the body, and then you walk through element by element on both sides. And then go. Is this the same thing? And then you. No. We only. Well, we only we don't we don't care about if they're the same unless they have that transition persist. Right. So we can just find the ones that exist on on the new on the new page. Right, and because they all have unique identifiers, they'll match up. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we yeah. just like it's query selector all for data astro transition persist. And then walks those. Is there? Does this exist on the new page? Uh, if it does, swap it. Swap it in. Okay. Um... So if we did a diff, then like we don't want to do a diff because then like then yeah. all of your components would be the state would be retained, and you didn't tell us that you wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah. This is an interesting thing. Yeah, because the implications of that are pro are probably fine for the majority of things because anything that you'd want to be stateful you would mark as persist yourself i always i i, I this makes sense i always thought that was kind of an interesting case because i'm back to our silly test uh test thing and i'm gonna i'll remove the other component for a minute um the the, the, the people picture this scenario right you know you know what i'm talking about like uh like i'm just gonna mm -hmm. put puts a silly what type equals yeah. text and and in their head, they're like, oh yeah, what if I have an imp input field on both of these, right? And if I do something yeah. here, obviously, and I go to test, and then, yeah. uh, did I not save one of them? I did not. Okay, so uh, is it is it just is this just a styling thing where it's like here, but I can't? You see didn't it. give no. it a type. Do you need to give it? You know, I'm not in. Oh I'm no, not you did type. <laughs> I'm not in dev. I'm not in dev mode anymore. Oh. Okay. I will. I was I was comparing the size on the preview build, so let's let's bring this up, okay, right? So the you know people picture this where they're like what, and then when I go to test two, they're like my text is gone. You know we can turn off the paint flashing, right? Um, and you know like that's why you diff because well yeah, like you you want to persist that if you don't have a mechanism, but I mean you can also just be like um, yeah. Uh, should I give it a name? Uh, yeah, I think you want to in this case. Persist. Usually, the things would be in like a common component, in which case you don't need to, because like the component is part of the hash. Right. Uh, but if it's not, then you would do it this yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, we we just do this, and then now when I do this, and I do this, and I go to test. Ta da! Yeah. See that this is a, it's an interesting topic to me because. Oh, does the input lose? F oh, okay. What if? Okay, yeah. But, see, but if the input was going to have an event on it, which would cause it to lose focus, like or sorry, how should I put it? It would be in a client component if 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 we're listening to JavaScript events on it. You you get what I'm saying? Like, I I think this would lose focus on the input. Um, I I think if right. you use JavaScript to handle the event to do the navigation, I think actually can we? Can we do something natively to just test that? 
Sorry. I, no, I, you're right. You might lose focus because it gets repositioned. In but this is kind of dumb anyways because it would be in a client component. So like you wouldn't even you wouldn't even you wouldn't even do this um, re realistically. That's why I don't think this actually matters a ton because like, um, yeah. I mean, can I just see? It's, I find this interesting because like it's the same thing that happened with islands. I think where. Uh, you know, with islands, like partial hydration is like, well, how, how are we going to do this? And like the island solution is like, well, you just tell us, like, tell us what you, what's an island. This is the same thing where it's like, anytime you try to do things automatically, like you take on a lot of complexity of having to figure out when to do them. And yeah. if you have the developer tell you, I want you to do this, like it removes so much complexity and make things so much simpler to actually implement. Yes, we lost focus because I clicked the button. I was trying. To, that's why I was going back to see if I could like do something that was based on cl typing to cause mm -hmm. this to do the focus um, loss. But yeah. I. But then I was like, if I was going to do that, I'd use a. I'd wrap it in a client side component, which means that I wouldn't like this one. I'd just preserve the client side component. I wouldn't like it. Wouldn't even be a question of opting into this. I would be doing it because I, like that's my intention. You clicked something. Yeah. Right. So like. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you know you're going to make an interactive input, it's going to be a client component. So at which point you, you, I presume you'd be persisting it. Like it's not, it's not. This is the. I'm always looking for ways that you can like shortcut something a little bit to drastically simplify. And you, this is the thing. You're like, look, we know what all the points of interest are. Why do we diff? We don't need the diff. And not diffing yeah. is very yeah. good thing. I, 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 I think this is. I think this is smart, and it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I, I like it. This is something I could, I could steal. Definitely. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you should. Um, someone asked about post request, uh, earlier. Okay. We don't, we don't do, we don't do, we only do navigation on the, on anchor links and like back and back and forth right now. Um, so we, we'll probably have some API soon to like where you can trigger navigation yourself. So like you could listen to a form submit and uh, do like a post, I think. I'm, I'm not really sure what that will look like, but yeah, currently we only handle anchors and like back and forth. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. I, I, um, I, I did confirm that it works very well with things like query parameters. Um, so like even without the URL changing in the Hacker News example, we were, I don't know if everyone yeah, yeah. noticed, it's, it's, it, it actually, it like see page two, page three, it, it, it handles even the base URL path not changing. So yeah, I guess there's always like more cases to look at with these things. Yeah, yeah. We've had like really great contributions on like the router. Uh, this one person named Marty is like, he's already submitted like a dozen pull requests. So stuff's so getting a lot better. Is it possible to use view transition without any state persistent throwing away all event listeners? It feels like nice. I mean, that's what the default is, right? Yeah. So the scripts are kind of weird, right? Like in a, in a normal APA navigation, your scripts rerun, you have a new window, like everything's new, but in a spa, it's not. So like we kind of follow the lead of all the, uh, these other similar libraries where like scripts do not re-execute. Um, so like there's, if you want to, like there, a common case is like dark mode. If you're like you're saving dark mode state in like local storage or something, um, we have an event called after swap. So as soon as we do the swap, we fire this event. So you can listen to that event like restore dark mode uh, as one example. Um, so yeah, there's going to be more of these events coming along, but like scripts are scripts are a little weird because they don't rerun. I see. <laughs> Any words on view transitions and web components? Uh, I it, they're just another DOM element, so it's kind of the the same the same thing. Yeah, that's 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 what I was thinking, but you never know. Maybe like the shadow DOM has some funny behavior. That seems to always be like the thing. I I, I imagine that's that's not the case. I think I think yeah. a simple snapshot to snapshot should just work. It's just. You, you, yeah, I mean, one th one thing that's interesting that I have not dug into is like, what is the implications of streaming? Because like in our case, we don't we don't try to stream in uh, the response because uh, we need to wait to it be able to swap in and everything. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how they're how this like the MPA is going to do that, right? Because like, what if you 
what if you try to animate something that's like super far down in the page? Like, does the browser like wait for the full page to finish before it does a transition, or like when does it start doing that? I'm not really no. sure. If, and this is a question that came up when we were talking to the Marco team a little bit. But the thing is, it, it, you could, you saw in the Marco example with streaming and stuff, the, the paint holding was only as far as like the, 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 the header. It's like it determined at that point that like it should go ahead. So then we saw the, the streaming loading state. Um, so yeah. that makes it a little bit interesting because then if the content hasn't loaded in, you're not going to get a view transition, but it, it makes sense you wouldn't because the transition yeah. is the, like the, the thing, the loading indicator. So it's like, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's an interesting question in terms of, uh, configurability or timing of painting and stuff, uh, where that control falls in. It's, it's interesting because we, you know, having that indicator, the loading and stuff with the streaming is kind of beneficial, but on the, uh, sometimes, but on the other hand, if you could hold it maybe a tiny bit longer, then you could get like a nicer transition. Maybe that's what you actually want. Like perfect example of this right. is actually, um, the way suspense and transitions work in react. Um, if you've ever seen, uh, any router example that I've ever done with solid or sol solid start, we do the loading state on the initial page load, but when we go to the next page, I mean, it's it's right in the solid uh, tutorial on the on the site where we have the if 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 I go down to um, one of these later examples like uh, transitions, our router bakes in what we call transitions, and it's not transitions. I want to change the name of this, but it's not transitions in the normal sense. It, it, what it happens is typically with suspense, you get this, you get like the streaming feel, right? Like you change the page, you get the loading, right? But mm -hmm. but but the actual like desired thing, at least according to Rails theory or all that, and what the React team was looking at and why they introduced stuff like transitions, is that on the initial load, yeah, you get that you get that uh, loading skeleton coming in, but then when you navigate, like maybe you keep the content there as long, like this is emulating the browser, right? Keeping it there as long as possible, and then maybe showing a different, like, affordance for the loading, uh, essentially, maybe yeah. a loading, yeah. and what I was getting at is, in, in that case, like, yeah, maybe subsequent navigation, you don't actually want to show the stream coming in. You actually want to wait till it's done. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, like yeah. how, uh, how we would, would tell the browser when to do that. So definitely interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, we do, pre we do prefetch. Yeah. Yeah. And Which, that's like, doesn't like next link does prefetching as well. So it's like yeah. kind of following that lead. Yeah. Yeah. And Svelte kit and a, a bunch of them do that prefetching. It's interesting. Um, cause for Astro's case, it's almost simpler. I mean, it depends on how you, what cache you're warming up, but like you can literally prefetch the like what what i'm getting here looks like a like say, normal url and i'm getting the html back there is nothing fancy about this this is not a special serialized format this is literally so like the the truth of the matter is if i hover and it did the prefetch although it, it, actually can i turn that on is that a thing like how, how do i do that how do I... you get it you get it it should happen but this is a, a link that solid produced Oh no! Yeah. So no, it should be. It should shouldn't matter. Actually, is it is it an anchor link? Uh, yeah. This is this should be just like a straight up anchor. Uh, I've never seen this behavior. That's why I'm actually interested. Are you sure that you're not filtering your your network or something? Okay, network. I mean, I this is just fetch XHR. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, let's do all. Okay. Okay, there it is. Interesting. Okay. What, what, it doesn't show up under fetch X HR. It shows up as uh, no. doc. No. I wonder what yep, other. Under. It shows up mm -hmm. as under other. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Oh, it is that's, what, that's, why I've ne that's why I've never noticed this. Um, I don't want the preview. This request has no data interesting what about this one Did this request have data did it get canceled because you hovered away that might cancel if you hover away or something i'm not sure 
Interesting. Okay. It's possible there's there's bugs with this. I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I, I'm not seeing a res like what kind of request is this? This is a. Well, it's a pre it's a prefetch, right? It's link rail prefetch. So maybe that's not inspectable. That's right. This is not HR. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. This is link prefetch. Sorry. Yeah. That that's why. I guess you can't you can't like see the contents of those. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Okay. It just yeah, well, like it goes into the cache, yeah. See, what I would expect here, what I like about this from like a Astro standpoint is your next page is just an HTML page. So using the browser the way it was meant to should work because you're like I'm prefetching this HTML page. Now I'm going to fetch this HTML page. It's no different. What's harder with client side libraries is like sure, you could fetch the the HTML page and get like a server cache warmed up, but it's mm -hmm. not the same thing you fetch after the fact. Like you, you when when you're doing client side routing, you're not fetching the whole page again. You so if you hit a separate page and hit and just got the full page rendered for you, that's not what you cache. What you can prefetch the data, you mm. can prefetch the component. Um, you know, like most like the lazy route could be preloaded. You can go, okay, I know I'm going to resolve to that route, so preload it. You can go fetch the data uh, separately, and then the client will render the rest. I think in the case of RSCs, they probably do something even. Um, uh, kind of middle ground because they 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 also want to warm up the uh, like the the actual like RSC output that they're going to send out. But it's 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 kind of interesting that with Astro's case, this part is actually should be very simple. It's like literally the same HTML document. Like whether you whether you hit it like this or you hit it like you know whatever. But like let me click on it again. Like this. It, the 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 document that you get sent is basically the same, I think, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that means it can actually cache. literally be just cached the way the browser caches it. Mm. <laughs> Lloyd says that your filter icon is red, and that's why you can't see it. I don't know. But yeah, I know I was seeing that. But I think that it's the second you click any of these that it goes red. So like. I was wondering what category it, because it wasn't fetch XHR and it, Oh, why is, why do I see it now? <laughs> oh, well, when you clicked on it, there is a fetch. Yeah. 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 But the preload doesn't show up. Yeah. Yeah. When I click on it, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's no, fun stuff. Are generators completely removed as part of Astro's rendering mechanism? This is a question. Uh, there's, Oh, well, I mean, I don't know if this person is asking, like users can still, you can still pass generators into like a template and stuff like that. Uh, just part of like our internal logic, it's removed. There might be like a couple left, but for, for the most part, it's removed. Okay. So that was part of what you guys did before. Generators were always interesting to me because they, they there's a performance penalty for them, but they also seem like really good at pause and, pause and starting, like much simpler API to do like, uh, a lot of the streaming mechanisms like yeah, you can... that's that's why we use them because it's like very easy to, to read and write the, that kind of code any thoughts uh, I mean I'm going to ask it any thoughts on ours like are you guys is this something that's getting worked on or whatever I know Ben was really really stoked um, but no I mean it's not being worked on um, community I, effort I maybe yeah I mean I'm not saying it can't be done but I don't know I guess we, we need to see how the how it plays out in the ecosystem like how essential is this like what does it mean for us to have rsc is it just like do you just not use astro anymore you just use your rsc i don't know use them together i don't know yeah it's interesting because then yeah. you have like server components inside server components yeah, right. yeah i mean i'm not opposed at all if that's what people want but all right let's start it um how many more animations can be added to astro <laughs> that's what, as, many, yeah. as many as we want <laughs> uh yeah that's fine i think we're running good on questions um any uh anything you want to shut out before we uh end our interview part of the stream today no no thanks for having me no this this is a lot no of fun I, I i'm glad i got to ask those questions about the diffing and stuff i've been i've been banging my head against the wall which is actually something i want to talk about in a minute after we let matthew uh, go, but I, I definitely learned something and I'm pretty excited for Astro three. I think you saw how easy, at least I, for my simple app to do the upgrade was, and then suddenly it's just like, win, 
So I think I think people are gonna would be have a really good time with this. I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think that um, existing users will just be like, oh, that's nice. Like it's like like a little bit of an upgrade. And then I think for uh, other people, people who really like can't get over the MPA thing, maybe some old prejudice about the way the navigation works. Mm -hmm. For for a lot of their cases, this just is not gonna be a concern. Yeah, I'll, I'll say like one thing that was surprising to me that if you, if you're someone that's like, well, I'm not a designer, I'm not really good at CSS, like you get really nice animations without hardly any work at all. Like literally, you just match DOM elements together and they like transition. It's, it's like beautiful. So like don't don't be afraid of doing it. Yeah, because I'm not that person, and I, I just in it just turned it on here, and then suddenly I was like, oh, that's like this is nice, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very simple effect, and it, I, I enabled it with one line of code. Yeah, cool. All right. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Um, we will probably have you or another one of your Astro com Still. companions one of these one of these uh, yeah. days again. But uh, th I'm looking forward for the release announcements next week, and you all should too. Um, have a good one. All right. See you all. Uh, August 30th is release. Perfect. So see awesome. Then. See ya. That is not the end of our stream, though. We still have some amazing stuff to talk about. Um, we also have this week in JavaScript, which for me, for me again, I I've been so heads down that it's, it feels like a slow week again. I'm, I'm we're gonna actually see if there's very much to talk about for this week in JavaScript. If you have stuff you think of uh, that we should talk about, you should probably uh, you should probably send it along. Um, you know, in chat, I wanted to talk about something before then though, and I think it's really on topic for today's um, conversation. And that is, um, I'm gonna actually make a banner for this, just going hand. I, I've been known to talk a lot about how, you know, don't worry about server components, they're basically islands, right? Um, and that's mostly true. I think that's a really easy way to explain to people stuff. But I, I think we touched on it a little bit today when we were kind of, what someone said, breaking Astro, is that in a lot of, there, there are cases where server components and islands are not the same thing. And this is something um, that I've kind of come to realize more and more recently. So yeah, I'm, let's call this section, how server components are not islands. Um, because I, I haven't been using the term server components a lot um, for my own work on solid. I, we, you know, we had islands and islands router and all this stuff because I, um, how should I put it? I server components is kind of a funny name because it's, it's like, it's, it's like in a sense compared to what you're used to, it's the new thing. So we talk about it, but it becomes the base of your application. So talking about the server components, most of the time you're actually talking about the islands when you're talking about the server components, like you're talking about the client components, not the server components. It's, it's very odd that server components becomes, becomes the name of the thing, but um, as I was, you know, been experimenting and going through this stuff, I realized that more and more that there, there are a lot of places where, you know, the assumptions that you make with islands are not the, are not the same as what you would do with server components. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Um, let me see if I can get Excalibur out. Cause I feel like, um, I feel like that's really, um, important to understand. And we saw a little bit about it, as I said, a bit earlier. Um, let me share my screen. Let's go back here. If you remembered um, my previous stream uh, when we were in here, I, I basically was like trying to explain to people what the difference between server components, uh, single page app mentality, MPA, turbo, you know, all these different approaches were. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about like even um, server rendered MPAs like, or SPAs. Like, I, like when I say SPA, I don't just mean client only. I mean like SPAs that render like on next. Like the initial load changes the math a bit, but generally speaking, when we kind of look at it in a table form, when you perform any kind of navigation you know, once the, you know, you, you're in that initial state, you render on the client, the state is in the client, 
and the router is on the client. And what's interesting is that MPAs is pretty obvious, server, server, server. But a lot of people see stuff like Turbo, right? And stuff like what, uh, you know, this uh, flamethrower and like uh, this stuff we were just looking at on Astro. And they're like, okay, so Astro, if you took a client router that does a view diffs like um, Astro and you took, um, you know, uh, you know, like islands, and then isn't that just the same thing as server components? And the answer to that is no. It, 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 while it's the easiest way to explain server components to people in a lot of, in a lot of cases, it is not, there are some key differences. And I think you can actually see it in this table actually pretty well. Um, uh, this is why I wanted to do this Astro stream too, so that I could like help fit in here. Because in both cases, they render on the server. And in both cases, the router is on the client, right? Where you're doing the switch. But the state where question is, is the question. Server components are like interact. Well, the, a server component solution, the client components are like the islands. That's why I'm saying the, the name of server components is terrible, but they they fundamentally render differently and have different expectations, right? Um, and I, we 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 sh we showed one of them uh, when we were talk when we showed with the Astro that global state kind of completely messes up hydration when you're doing this turbo kind of uh, navigation. Like it's possible that you, you basically can cause hydration mismatches because the server is not aware. So global client state either has to be sent back on the request on every time. And in a sense, when we used to do stuff on the ASP.NET, that is exactly what we did. But server components don't send it back and they don't have that problem because they assume, they're just architected assuming that client components um, can always access that state and th it is the one who actually ends up owning the state after the initial render. Okay. So the other place where, uh, where this kind of differs is actually very evident in, in my hacker news demos, right? Because I, 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 sh I showed this previously on stream, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this again, just for context so people can see if you notice in here, if I pick a piece of text anywhere on this, let's pick this 24 comment story. If I pick, uh, let's pick something unique. Reading summary of mixed judgment from November 22nd. Sounds good, okay. If I go in here and I look at the network tab and I go to the document and I go localhost and I search it. Okay, let me cut it down a little bit more. Um, Reading a summary. Sometimes formatting is going to be the thing that, that 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 gets me. Let me try this one. If if you give away free comments and expect ads, like it's like not working for me right now. Um, let me try and find. Maybe I just need to find some text from the actual uh, HTML to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's find a, a real story in here. Oh, am I? It's because I didn't load the page on this page. I'm looking at the wrong document. I'm. This is this is the fun with the client side router. I forgot. So let's try this again. Let's let's do this. If you give away your content for free and expect whatever, okay. See how this is only serialized into the page once. If I if I find any piece of data on this page, it's only going to be serialized into the page once. If I instead, um, uh, let's, it's funny, I don't have all the, the links off the top of my hand, ha ha hand anymore. Remix Hacker News. Let's just search that. Maybe I should just search in my own repository. Uh, no, it's right there. If I, if I pick like any client side framework, right, and then do the same thing. Let's go to, uh, uh, let's go to this 
the same story stories this one let's go here and then you know I look at the payload um, how was I doing it here sorry I was just yeah okay I was looking at the response from the document yeah okay yeah if 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 I if I if I search in here for you know the same text string we're going to find it once in the html and once in this blob down here uh remix content it could be next json it could be whatever any single page app if i if i, if I go to solid starts example again solid not the islands one any any other and not the astro one um I think I think it's just hacker news or yeah, perfect. If I go to this one, you know, streamed in all nice, see that? Um, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna look at sorry, I need to grab the same page again. Do 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 and then I'm gonna grab this text. I look for it. I'm going to find it twice again. So this, this is common in all single page apps and it's, but in Astro, it doesn't need to serialize it twice. It does not have the double data problem because this content never gets hydrated. So it never gets, needs to get sent to the browser. As it turns out, if I look at Marco, you'll see the same thing. And if I look at pretty much any MPA implementation, like my quick one or whatnot, you will not see the double data. The double data will, will problem is solved mostly by clever nesting of islands like that toggle component we'd never need to send this however if i go next rc demo and i make the same demo in react server components and we go to the same page and we open it and we search I'm trying to remember if I did this already on stream, if this part's a surprise, but if I take the same text, how many times do you think it, it's going to show up? Well, it's twice. It's once in the markup and it's again, it's again in, in here, uh, in this next push date. It's be, it's because it's because RSCs is a spa and quick Marco or MPAs. Okay, let's let's try this with solid. Um, let's try this with uh, what? What am I going to try it with? Uh, solid islands example. Solid HN islands. Is this an MPA or is this a or is this a spa? Because this one um, is doing client routing, um, and it's actually not. If I, if I expand this header here it's actually not re-rendering it when I navigate away. So I want you to guess how many, how many times does it show in the solid, the solid version here for, for not our normal uh, stuff, but for our islands router mode. Let's look at the network. Um, and then let's find that same string. Do, 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 do. Once in the HTML, not in the JSON. <laughs> Solved. Well, I I wish it was it was it was this simple. I, what I was trying to get at is MPAs can add um, like what Astro did. They can add like. Uh, a, a simple replacement based uh, router like Turbo, they can do a simple diff. It's not like, it is still a diff, but it's a very simple diff of using those persistent nodes, you know, like very cheap diff. Uh, it's, it's the best diff you can think of. It basically doesn't diff. Um, but, you know, basically compare the two things 
you know, find the things that exist, they need to persist, and they can do this client side kind of hybrid routing. But there, there's a problem here, which is the one that I, I showed with, with Matthew. The reason that we, there, there, there's a couple things we have to understand here. Why would it need to push the same data twice? Oh, it's because both the service and rendered and the CSS streamed. Yeah, but like they could just not send it. You'd think. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on this because I, I I know the answer to this question now, and I did not know the answer to this question before. So that that alone makes me think that this is probably internet inter, sorry interesting content at least to someone out there because I know exactly why they send it twice, and we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at that here. Okay. Let me get rid of that banner so I'm less in the way of things, okay? I, I'm, I'm actually going to switch to this view, just whatever. Okay, so... Streaming is actually part of the reason, but not why people think, probably. So, like, what I'm getting at is Astro and Solid Start's version, which are actually pretty similar to each other, don't do the double data. They're actually very similar to MPAs today, whereas Reacts does the double data. And the reason for this is we keep on showing these examples where the content is shown immediately. But what if the content wasn't shown immediately? Luckily, we have an after app open right now, so we could like do a little bit of playing around to show what I mean. I was showing the view transition API. I actually don't care to uh, use this, I actually don't need the view transition API to show off what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to pick one of these pages. I'm going to get rid of the input because I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of, yeah. This isn't about navigation. This is just about initial page load. Um, we have a component, we have a counter, right? And the, well, actually, we already have this example right here. Let's go to test two and bring this one back. Um, mm, no, 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 it's not this. It's slightly like this. It's a little bit different. I'm going to need another component. I'm going to make a, we're going to just get rid of this counter for now too. And whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to make a new component and this component I'm going to call decision. Okay. And decision is going to pass in some kind of children. Let's say div hello, okay? Actually, let's make it h1, make it really loud, okay? And what is decision? Well, decision is going to be another component that I'm going to make here. And it's going to be a simple client component. Um, actually, I'm just going to copy the counter because it's probably like 50% the same. Rename decision. It's actually the, the funny thing is it's actually kind of the talk. You know what? Can we just use this toggle component? Like, does it, it probably has too much information. It, it's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, it's, I'm making something very similar to the toggle component. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, import create signal from SolidJS, and then I'm going to go, um, we're going to use a Boolean for this. We're going to call it show set show equals create signal true. Okay. And then we're going to say like toggle show set show and simply what like S is not S. Okay. And then toggle show. And then the important part here is we're going to pass props dot children through to this. Okay. Um, and oh, I guess the really important part is this. This is the, okay. So basically, I should just move this out. I don't know why I'm 
doing this. Putting inside the button doesn't make any sense. I'm going to put click. We'll just do click and then make this a fragment. And we will put this underneath just to be easier format. Okay, so following what I'm doing so far, this is just a simple toggle that wraps and it shows and hides. Um, yeah, and I, you know, if I, yeah, it's, it's fine. I, I mean, it, we could also make this like if show um, hide otherwise show, okay. And this will, I don't know, this will just be on test Astro, right? Okay, let's go to test Astro, which is over here somewhere. I'm actually gonna, I'm just gonna open a new tab just in case I want to compare this with the others again in a minute, okay. So, unsurprisingly, it says hello. Oh, right. I always have to remember this. Client load. Right. Okay. Unsurprisingly, when I click hide and show, it should do it. Okay. What's what am I? Is it because I? Um, let's 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 clean this up completely. Uh, we don't even need this link. Okay. And then. What do, okay. Oh, that's interesting. What am I, I'm doing something wrong here. Um, let's, let's make sure that, could it be a hydration mismatch? That's a very weird hydration mismatch. I, I haven't played an Astro in a while, so it's possible that we're not getting complaints here, which is interesting. Okay. I've got a theory why this is happening, but you're right. If, the, if, if, if this is the issue that I, I think it is, then uh, top level fragment hydration mismatch. Annoying, I thought that was done with. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so we, we're showing and hiding, okay? Now, if I inspect this element, I see an Astro Island, solid zone, Astro slot just gets slotted in and out. Are updates fetched from the server? No. That's, I, I, want, I want to make this very clear here. This behavior, not all islands frameworks support this behavior. That's why a lot of times in my toggle is done with display none, but, um, but Astro actually solves this and RSCs do this too. If something is part of that server tree initially, like, 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 even if it's not like being shown, see here it's shown. So it's like really easy. Like when we load the page, let's just load the page initially. You see this Astro slot. Hello. They know when you hide it to remove it and then they can show it again. Right. If I change the default to false, then it's like, how does it do that? Because it, it still works, right? Well, let's look at what it actually renders here. You're like, wait, where where is it? And then I click show and it's there. Well, let's find it um, actually, because they've changed their mechanism here, I think. Um, let's look let, Let's look what comes over the, the, the wire on this page. And that might give us a little bit of a hint of where this is, because we know they they don't do a request back to the server. See this? They send it as a a template element. So when they load the page, they see it, they consume the template element, and then they pass it in. And then when we toggle it, they can show it. So basically, what I'm getting at is even the path not taken is rendered with Astro, and it is with React server components as well, because you don't want to go back to the server to show this. Like, this is part of the initial render. Okay. So, 
this is this is a, a clever way. I think what happens is by the time we look at it, Astro has consumed it. They actually remove the template element to not mess with the 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 component. Like if I look in Astro Island, the template is gone. So if I if I had a breakpoint early enough on the flow, we would actually see that template element. Um, you know, in the in the DOM, but essentially every prop gets serialized, whether it's shown or not. So essentially either like if let's switch back again, let's make it true by default. Do they send the template? I said they didn't because obviously we didn't see it show up in the DOM twice, right? If I, if I go here and look now at this, sorry, expand it out and look down, it's just slotted. There's no template. Astro does either or to make sure that they only serialize it once. That that is the key here. They know if you used it as a slot. If you use the slot, then they they have it. And if you didn't use it, they throw it in the template element. That template element is in a different format than this JSX stuff at the bottom, but it's the same idea. Next wants it so that when you if this was initially not shown and then you click neck uh, click open it's there so it doesn't go back to the server as i said not all mpa frameworks actually solve this case solid start islands today do not solve this case um, we the the thing that we put together w only works with initial rendered stuff so you have to use display not marco four and five don't solve this case i imagine a lot of island solutions do not solve this case, or at least they didn't before, but now it's it's a thing that people are aware of. I thought anything that's dependent on client signature stream do not sent in an initial render. No, the thing is, you we get the server render the the page, so this is part of the continuous tree. This is why when Dan Abramoff showed off his stuff, he was trying to show that. Uh, in the case of, uh, let's go to test two. Uh, no, sorry, test. This is rendered eagerly. Like they do two passes. They render the server components and then they render the client components. This is a client component, let's pretend. So when they render the server components, they render the prop that they're gonna pass to the client component at that point. It'll have, it can have its own client components inside of it. We can put like decision two in here, but, um, but it still does it. In fact, you know, let's let let's put decision two in here to show my show my point. Um, okay, and what we're gonna do H two. Um, second. reading this is solid probably not important but if your solid component is not a client component will it be an astro slot or just an h1 yeah i mean if it's not a con con client component the whole thing will just get wouldn't become an uh astro island which means it wouldn't have a slot the whole thing would just get compressed into a single html markup um like it's just part of that initial kind of run what i want to show here i put decision two inside decision one so if we go back to our test here now, I can hide this one and show it. I can hide them both and show it. I think if I hide this and then hide this and show it, it's... this actually tells you a lot about what Astro does. Do you, do you see? If it actually re-rendered the, the child component when it, when it did it um, or hydrated it again, it would actually always show open when we did this and get back to initial state. This means that when Astro takes that template and removes it again, it only hydrates once. After that point, when I'm detached here from the DOM, I'm still live. And then, so when I hide it and show it again and show it again, I'm still live. Like I, I didn't, I don't lose state. I bet you if I actually put a console log right now inside a decision, uh, is this decision? I should change the name, decision and I go console.log decision. We're only gonna see this ever print twice in the client. Let's go to the console. 
twice. If I hide this and show it, nope, nope. Because it just takes the DOM nodes and when it inserts it, it goes, oh, this island's been hydrated or not. If it hasn't been hydrated, it does the hydration. If it has been hydrated, or then it just goes, okay, I'm just inserting and uninserting this thing. This is a, this is very powerful, very simple way of approaching this, but there's a problem with this as well. Um, if you have, it, I mean, there was no problem with this actually from the global state standpoint in that um, like, because it's the same state, hiding it or showing it, like it, it only hydrates once. I guess what would be interesting is if it started false, essentially, I mean, th I guess this is where the problem comes in. If we start it as false, right? We're only gonna, s let me see what it does. You only see decision once, right? So it's that first show that actually causes the the hydration and though this won't be fine right do, do, do you follow me so it's deferring the hydration here so if we had our silly counter if you if you were showing this one not showing this one and then you up the counter 10 that changed the some other component then you showed it there'd be a hydration mismatch at this point kind of like what i was showing earlier when i was talking about um with with matthew about the page change but basically um, global state changing after the fact completely screws up hydration. So deferring hydration with global state is very, very dangerous. Right? Like client idle is actually something that anyone who has any kind of expectation of communication between components has, I mean, has to even be a little bit concerned with, but any of the lazy loading rules, if there's state involved, there's a good chance you're going to break it. That's why most of the time I always just do client load because the, um, Astro, I think at least runs hierarchically. Um, but this, this is like, I, I'm not picking on Mastro here. I'm just want to talk about Island solutions that don't consider global state um, basically get in this scenario. Um, does it load all the comms? Yes. Does it affect the loading time parts that are, are visible? Um, when, what do you mean load all the comments eagerly? Um, it renders all the comments on the server. Um, yes. So like, uh, but like these are all HTML, right? Like that's what I'm saying. Like the page that gets sent down here, if if I compressed some of these, you know, you just see them as templates in the in the Astro component. Like when we sent it down in the first place, is what is what I'm saying. It's always going to render all the comments, um, and this is a trade off that comes with this approach because you don't go back to the server, but uh, but it's like, I, I think there's still benefit here. I think that's better than like going back to like fetch each comment. It depends on the size of things, obviously. Um, but like this, yeah, I mean, this is an extreme case, but generally speaking, you're right. There are cases like this is too many comments. Let's just lazy load them anyways. Like there's other UX things you would do differently, but generally speaking, the main mechanism between these islands and RCs, which do the same is they have to serialize all the props, which means they explore all the branches. I'm good there on load. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, idle, if they're all idle, they probably will also work too. What I was trying to point out is if you don't show something initially, then it lazy hydrates when it gets inserted. Um, and that lazy hydration can break stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure people are doing this all the time, but I just, this is, this is, this is the, this is a problem. Um, perhaps, you know, so we've got two problems that are actually really, really similar here. We have server going back to the server on the page transition, not knowing that client context and completely messing it up so that when it goes to render it and hydrate it, it will screw it up. 
And similarly, any deferred context of things that you hide um, being kind of messed up. And the way RSCs solve all, both of those problems is really simple. They don't render um, the islands in the in the serialization. They don't. They basically when you when you're doing like the main HTML rendering, they'll render the islands and insert everything and do all that. But when they're serializing the props, they stop at the islands and serialize those props and whatnot. And uh, th this is where um, th things get a little, this is the difference, right? Astro always assumes that a new context is hydratable. React uh, only assumes that you hydrate in, or, you know, like server points only assume that you hydrate in the first place and any after action has to be done client rendered because the state could have changed that's that's essentially the 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 critical difference but it's we aren't fully there yet to why um server components uh are double serializing So what, what I'm, I'm trying to get at, I'm sorry, I'm reading a couple of comments here to see if I can like answer them on the way. Um, but I don't think it quite pertains to where I'm getting at. Okay, so this, this is a fundamental difference because everything that server components do is to preserve the consistency of client-side state without having to send it back to the server. And... It means that the, if, if I was doing this demo with server components, this would hydrate. Me clicking show would not hydrate at this point. It would render call, decision, but it would actually client render the component, which is perfectly fine. It would insert the server markup around it, like, you know, the hello, but then it would client render the client component. So where I'm getting at is there are two forms of serialization, essentially. And you might be like, okay, so React's just being lazy. They're just like, okay, rendering the one side and then like serializing everything else out and that's that blob, right? Basically, they don't hide the thing if it's showing. And there could be a couple of reasons for that you might be like, like Astro, doesn't have to do anything. You can just take the elements that are already there and just hide and show them again, right? Whereas if the hide and show mechanism r relies on client rendering, then you d the templates won't have the client rendered, shouldn't have the client rendered code in it because they should be like, they shouldn't be hydrating. They should be like devoid of it. And I, we can actually show this if we look at this. Astro actually gives you some information here. Cause when you're in it, you got Astro Island, which is the island. And then um, like you can see the client renders this part. And then Astro slot is where the server comes in again, hits an island, client renders this part. And then when I'm showing it here, and then again, there's a slot. So essentially, it is possible by looking at this markup that if you basically grabbed, if, if, if you cared about like serializing for island one here, you could basically go, okay, grab this, now skip everything until you get to the slot. And then this is that slot's props. And then skip everything until you get to slot. And that's this slot, this island's props. What I'm basically saying is it's easy to act, it's very easy to see server, client, server. Like you can actually see from the markup the split between client and server rendered portions. So you could potentially abstract, like pull out the client components and take what's already rendered to um, back into markup. Now, obviously, React doesn't do that. But in theory, you could you could basically just with a simple walker reconstruct the template from anything that's inserted, and then you're like, 
ta-da, you've solved the double data problem. Because essentially, um, th those templates are now good to go for future rendering, and you don't need to send the template version. Um, but the, the problem is it's not that simple. So I don't know, are people still following me? I, I, I know this is a little complicated. The, the whole key to this from the Astro side and the islands side in general is if you don't have to worry about context, you're not going to worry about um, uh, like the fact that you, you'll just hydrate every time. It makes it a lot simpler. But, you know, it's more complicated, but you should be able to still pull the templates out is, is what I was trying to get at. The, but the problem that comes in is something a little bit more complicated. And I actually have some sample code that I want to show you all so we, we, can, we can talk about this for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up a... Uh, I'm going to just scroll down on this decision and I'm going I'm to show you some, some fictional code here that hopefully won't yell at me too bad. This is solid code in sense. And what I'm saying is pretend this is like the server file. Maybe I should reverse the order of it, server file. And this is a client component. I mean, this is like React, but pretend this is like RSCs, okay? Okay. And I've, I've created a few scenarios here. I like this because I can show all four scenarios. Uh, let's get here. Hydration, it sounds like hydration is extremely difficult to make right, isn't quick a solution. Um, quick actually does, doesn't solve this problem in the same way. Marco6 does this too. Um, I, 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 the, the best way I can put it is, remember someone asked earlier and they're like, I thought that something stateful being in the decision uh, let me show this really quick. If they're thinking, they're like, if I go show and I go div, actually, I mean, the, how should I, the, the problem is if, if something stateful is what drives the change here quick, won't include this initially, but this will make its way to the client bundle. There's no guarantee, and it works because they're automatic, that this is on the server. B because uh, essentially, Quick doesn't serialize all the paths ahead of time, but it also depends on the fact that it can lazy load stuff. So you don't have the same like, guarantees that this is only ever going to be on the server. Like, you know, in, in here that this is only ever going to be on the server in the quick case, it could be either or which, you know, impacts maybe the way you design or architect your app. Okay. I, I, I do want to point this out, like, and resumability, which I talked about on a previous stream, about, I think two or three streams about, is a very complicated subject in itself. What I think the common theme you should be seeing here is that none of these solutions are actually particularly simple, which is kind of alarming because you're like, okay, if this, if we're in a zone where everything is complicated, maybe we're like looking at this completely the wrong way, um, which is a very fair statement to make. So, like, j just to get back to m this example here, is I've created two exam two 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 setups here. One with a, basically a server function that requests async data and uses that async data in its child, and an island that requests async data and uses that to decide whether it's to show. The, those server, uh, uh, those server um, children. Now I'm gonna make this. This was just me kind of brainstorming it. I'm actually gonna re remove this part of it, and I'm just going to make this a lot simpler by just saying like, look, it's a span, okay? Because this alone 
explains the problem here. Um, basically, suspense is a mechanism that we use to allow out-of-order streaming. Which is great. It means that we can render the top of the page, the bottom of the page, the header, the footer, the navigation, while basically holding on waiting for that main content to show. But the problem here is that at the time we render this, we don't know if we're going to access props.children, right? We could be waiting on it and showing this fallback, which is showing, you know, this div loading, and we're not sending, we're not doing the span. And guess what? The rest of the page finishes and you send it to the client. And now you've got a bit of a problem because, well, you assume that this is, even if you're trying to be smart to kind of decide like, did I use it or not? Like, it's not too hard to use a proxy or something to decide like when you render it, if you use it or not. And then if you don't use it, then serialize it. At the time of the, that you flush the server rendering, like the shell of the app, the thing that like the, where the component starts, you don't actually know if the props being used. And if, and the easiest assumption, because you need to serialize props for, for hydration of these islands, is to say that, oh, I, it wasn't used. I'm going to serialize it, like make the template form, so to speak. And the problem with that is when it finishes, it, it now sends it as HTML and you're back to the double data. You, you did it twice. So you might be like, okay, well, what if we just serialize it first? No, that doesn't help us because we still don't know, like the whole, way to avoid double data is the knowledge of if it's used. If otherwise it's going to be coming after some way, right? Like th there's different ways to send things ap after, you know, like you can load it async, like we were talking about quick, you can fetch it on the server, you know, like, you know, when you show it, but you, you can also try and push it through on the same stream. But the problem is you don't want to block hydration and you have no reason to think you'd need to block hydration in this case. It might be just that this component never needs to use it. It's not like because of some suspense or async loading. It could literally just be that given the initial state, you just don't send it. And the reverse is actually awkward too because what if you decided to send this loading fallback? So you're like, good, I don't need to serialize it. I sent the loading fallback. Um, but by the time the client goes to hydrate, it's already been replaced with the server stuff and there's no loading thing. So it's actually missing. It works both ways. You both double serialize potentially if you're trying to be smart and you under and you miss serializing. So like the, the, the easiest solution is just do everything twice. Basically, when you combine the need for global state that's preserved in the client and you combine it with any kind of async streaming situation, the double data problem finds itself not solved. Are these server side components? Yeah, um, th this is assuming that this is a server component and then that the island is the use client, like this is a client component. So I'm, I'm showing a server component passing server children into an island in this example. Right, so this is a place between those constraints of not being able to like hydrate after the initial client load because the client state and the constraint of of uh, this kind of scenario of like out of order streaming and, and whatnot, you're kind of like between a rock and a and a hard place. But the problem is, 
this only solves half the problem. Like, there's a reason why Astro, Quick, Marco, Solid Islands example, whatever, all score 90s on that page to test. React server components score 60, and single page apps score like 50. That test is a serialization test. It's a serialization nightmare. But the thing is, like, we can reverse the template and only get it once. But the challenge is, how do you stop the serialization? Like, the way I'm looking at it, where I'm standing right now, server components only solve half the performance problem. Like, I mean, people were talking about quick a minute ago. It's a fair question because it's like, if server components are only solving hydration, then there's other ways to solve hydration, like resumability. Like, why don't we just all be resumable and not hydrate? The reason that server components are compelling is because they provide way stronger guarantees. You're not worried about weird closure things going on and, you know, like dollar signs and, you know, hoisting. And I, I said there's a way to do resumability without that, probably, like, hypothetically. But I'm still saying, like, even my resumable model, you know, like, doesn't solve, like, I, I assumed it would work with something like this or, like, something like islands. Because the, the assumption is that... Um, there has to be some knowledge if you know what will never make it to the client. And you can make a Marco level compiler to solve that. Um, you can rely really heavily on lazy loading like Quick does, which I, as I said, like just, it, it doesn't necessarily I ideal. Or, you, you know, you're kind of, unfortunately, Re React server components as they are today, only, as I say, solve half the problem. And this is, this is why, you know, the, the people aren't seeing the performance wins on their simple benchmarks because the code's bigger a bit, you know, as a baseline. Sure, you shrink the components afterwards, but then, like, it, it, it makes things really hard, essentially. And this is why I wanted to point out that why server components are not islands. And most of our exploration that we people have been doing to kind of add client-side uh, to um, navigation to islands is missing this fundamental stuff. And now you can be like, okay, well, how can I, maybe some of that stuff's okay to be missing. I actually don't think so. I think that stuff needs to be there. And when you follow it to its natural conclusion, you end up, I think, with React server components or something similar, which is, you know, as I said, from a performance standpoint, kind of depressing. Yeah, it, it, again, it's not about skipping it through hydration. You have to handle the situation of what's not shown at the time. Otherwise, like if 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 they if if Astro or RSCs did not serialize span here or whatever hello here when we did the show and hide, you'd have to like when you press show, you'd have to do another request for it. And the thing is, how do you request the code for one specific component somewhere down the middle of a tree? Like you, you don't, you don't make an endpoint per component. Like the hierarchy is important for the state of the instance, the template that gets sent here. Like, you know how you use two decision. I mean, you can actually see this really obvious here. If I look at the uh, network, this is the same component twice, right? Um, let's expand it out. This is the same component twice. But each one has its own template because every instance is different. The first one has hello and another island in it. The other one's template has, has a second in it, you know? The, 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 in one way, that w w template works really nicely here in Astro because they know they're only going to show one or the other. But Astro doesn't have out-of-order streaming and, in fact, blocks, I believe, when you get into an async island situation. And, again, what makes this kind of uh, tricky is if a template-based system ever wanted to render both all the time, the output would be exponential because 
you'd have that component, then you'd have the template for it. And then let's say, like, let's pretend we're showing it. You, you'd, you'd have this, you'd have the component, you'd be showing it here, then you'd be also showing it in the template and inside, like basically you, you'd you have both components and their children in here and the template for the children in here and the components and template of children there. It just, it basically marshmallows out it, um, by depth. It basically is like a factorial. So once you get to a point where you have to serialize both like React does, you have to pull the stuff out into a centralized prop um, store, which is explains a lot what you're seeing here. They're just kind of like pushing in these things into, it's basically writing to a specific location in a global lookup so that they can dedupe based on an ID. So they're like, oh yeah, I have, I have this thing essentially. Um, APIs like this are really smart by the way, because it looks like an array or something. So when you push and the page hasn't loaded yet, this is a trick that Marco I think was doing as well. You, it, it actually just makes a normal array that it can process. But then you can actually like once the the framework loads, you can actually change the. You, I don't know if they do this, but you can override the push to do like your special logic. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's it's actually really smart kind of thing if they're if that's what they're doing. Anyway, so that's sort of an aside. But my my point is, essentially, you start if you even if you started at something like Astro Islands. Where and you started this template thing. It's really simple because everything's localized and you can diff against it as you walk. You know that whole thing. You end up basically back at oh okay now I need a global lookup and uh, a ser prop ser serialization format. Like you basically end up back at RSCs if you follow this path long enough. But. Do you want to be on this path if you can't, if you're only solving half the problem? It's interesting. That this this is what I wanted to talk about today. There there is another way maybe to solve the double data. I want to put this out there just in case people um, had their own ideas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the hide and showing thing is the same as the templates. Templates are always hidden. Like, it's not a mechanical thing on the way we handle it, we serialize it. It's just fundamental to the fact of, like, what gets, what can be rendered when, um, essentially, um, and the way the hierarchy of the components work. Um, do, do you think choosing between resumability or de double data loading should be a user length choice? Um... No, no, I don't think these are problems you want to think about. I think resumability, in theory, should just be like a, a different way of doing hydration, essentially. Like, it, sh it should just be like, okay, I'm not actually running a bunch of code to hydrate. I can read from serialization. So if the choice comes to the end user there, it's a choice of how aggressive you want to serialize and have that guide how much code runs when you, when you load. That seems reasonable. I would love if it didn't affect the authoring experience. The double data problem is just something that, as I said, because MPAs have been solving this for so long, like almost a decade now with Marco, um, it's just something that I think should be part of the solution. Like, cause like quick doesn't have the double data problem, right? Um, it doesn't solve what I was talking about that RC solve in terms of client side routing, you know, like with the server bits, but it doesn't have the double data problem. So like, as long as we have this double data problem, it's going to impact initial page load, which means that this will not be as good as, um, what MPAs do. It just isn't actually a replacement for MP MPAs. Basically we're still in a zone where, you got to choose one or the other. MPAs are a bit more capable now because they have this client routing thing, but don't do anything too complicated with global state preservation because it's going to break. Or um, you have this stuff, it's just not going to be as 
as as fast or as small unless you can solve it so there's a and it occurred to me there's a and i i i, I sat down with the keel and I, and I showed this to him and he was like okay sure why don't we just uh serialize props children because we don't know it's used but then on the server don't send it he's like just use the the pre-serialized template to to render it he's like just solve it in reverse <laughs> such an obvious answer right Let me explain a bit. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but let, I, I needed to build this up to, to get to that. First of all, the serialized version isn't going to have the child islands rendered in it, which means that you're going to have to client render those child islands. Right? But think about what's happening here. This only happens for ch chunks that come after the words in, during suspense. Because um, if anyone used solid streaming SSR before 1.3, probably not many people, you'd have to be incredibly brave. Solid start was like alpha, alpha, alpha at that point. Almost no one was doing streaming rendering, but solids had streaming rendering since like 1.0, like pretty much. But it took to 1.3 to get our current HTML one. Well, the original version of solid streaming rendering was really simple. We rendered the HTML of the outside of the page and then when suspense completed, like we streamed the data, we just client rendered the rest of the page. It, and on fast networks, it was incredibly fast. It's actually faster than what we do today. Because if the JavaScript package was already loaded, um, the client components could actually start pre-rendering parts of the page that uh, like is the way our suspense works, that's not blocking. We could actually like render the page except for like where the show component was that you know was like show me the list or the for list, but we could actually render the rest of the layout in the background, and then as the data came in, complete the rendering. So just stream the data, not the HTML. It was faster. The problem is then I went on a slow network, and I realized what my problem was, because it couldn't actually show the stream content until the JavaScript bundle had loaded. Whereas with rendered HTML, like the way we stream now, it, it slots everything into place with script tags pushed into the page before hydration. You could Your JavaScript bundle could load at the very end and then hydrate the whole page or it could hydrate in any state in between and hydrate as far as it could. So on a really slow network, you know, or where the assets are like delayed or something, it, it put this way, it, it is pretty uncommon. Your JS will usually load faster than any like data API perhaps, but if you're doing the request starting on the initial request from the server, that round trip, like you can see it. Um, then like it was much faster and much better to server render the HTML. But this is kind of a, taking a page from that book. You're like, look, if you get in this zone, then just don't push it into place until the JavaScript bundle is loaded in the client so that you can client render it and not get a layout shift. That's that's basically how you could solve this. And then you're not double serializing the data. You're only delaying till the JavaScript loads streaming in some of that content. And I kind of hate that, you know, because it's not as clean and it's not as nice and it's not, and it's a bit, and it's more complicated, but I, had to, I started thinking about it for a moment, and I'm like, how often do you do this? Can you guys actually think of a real-life situation where you fetch data above? It could be in the island, could be on the server. That part's the same. But where a child component's suspense boundary depends on it to show server children. Because, like, pretend this fetch stuff is fetch 
posts, right? Okay. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna. Now we got a list of posts. Okay. So we only want to show when posts. Okay. Like just picture any kind of data you render. What is going to go inside the show component? Maybe a for component. That's like for each post. You're right. Do something. Basically, the way this occlusion works across client server is you're, you're, I mean, you could probably come up with a way to serialize the render prop, but then that would have to be part of the client bundle. What I'm, what I'm getting at is this can never receive the information from the resource this way. Like if, if this was up here, essentially, like if, if you load the list here and then you render the list in here, then like, wh why are you even doing this? Like the, as this, this use case is actually probably very, very edge case actually, because if you're, as I said, if you're fetching in here, you're not going to, put props.children in here, it can't receive the post. It can't render based on the information given. It's no way to get the information into this thing. And basically it's static layout pieces. Like I can see you using it for a fallback, but like it's, it's, it doesn't actually make a ton of sense. Like basically any situation in which you could like most situations in which you could like put it in here, you could also probably pull it outside of the, of the suspense boundary. I'm not saying every situation, but I actually think this situation is actually much, much rarer because for the most part, um, you're probably going to be fetching data on the server and suspending on the server. Because there's no, the second you have to pass this through here, now you have to serialize it anyway, because now it's a prop, right? Like, yeah, anyway, just, just a, just a, a, a sort of thought here. So I think even the least, the less desirable solution in this zone is probably sufficient for the case. But I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a peek into my head in terms of why islands and our and server components have a very different considerations when it comes down to actually implementing with client-side routing involved. Um the, well, they don't they don't actually have to be um, a slot element. I, I think slot elements are almost useless. I mean, like I use children here, but like fallback is another one of these, right? We have slots. They're, they're, they're named props. Like if you think about it, this is also a, like a server context being passed in. Um, so like, I didn't even realize this, but, um, Nikhil, let me see, let's see, do, do we have the latest solid start? Um, solid start. What branch am I on? Um, I do not, let's check it out. Let's check it out. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna show something, uh, I'm running later. Let's, let's go, okay, solid start. I am on the Astro branch, let's go back to main and pull, cause I am 167 commits behind. I want to show something. I, I took a, another look at his notes demo and I, I, I don't only thought children worked, but when I actually looked at his notes demo, I was it the sidebar notes here. Um, see, he's passing children 
and expanded children. Basically, any name, any like we called it children here instead of passing it between the headers. But basically, name props are are any prop can be handled treated as a slot. Right, you have to serialize all the props essentially. That's that's the, the that's the thing, and we can tell when something is a is is an HTML element. We have a special like object format. Um. Yeah, the only thing I'm going to notice is I I told I mentioned before we don't actually um, support um, the show and hide thing currently. So he's actually showing extended expanded props always and using display block or none as a way of toggling it. Um, it you know what, actually, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me open this for a second, show you what. NVM use 18, PM, PM install. Let's just get this going. Um, This is like the whole solid start repo, so it takes a minute. Um, yeah, let's take a look at this. Um, PM, 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 filter. Um, um, what is it? Example notes. Example notes dev. This is on the latest 0 0.3 release. We changed to using React syntax for our islands. Um, you can play with it. We have the notes and the movies demo now available as code. Everything's been merged in. I'm not happy with the layout and stuff, and it's part of what I'm working on. It's still experimental, but um, let's go locals 3000. Um, lovely. What happened here? Oh, do I? It's funny, it's like, I have Redwood open too, don't I? What is this one? Huh, interesting. I haven't like updated or ran this on my computer recently. It's funny though, because I, this was working at the time of merge. I, I suppose I could go back like a couple versions on main I must have broke something recently on the notes demo. Um, let's go back to where I actually did the merge. Let's go here. Let's go here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's not a good sign. It's like everything's already up to date. So let's discard this change. Yeah, this is interesting. It's like, give me a different lock file. Um, yeah, this is like a mini flare issue because the notes demo uses Cloudflare locally. It works on my other computer. It doesn't work on this one for some reason. Probably something worth looking into. So I guess I can't show it right now unless I can find that you're using an old PMPM. Oh, is that what's going on? Unless we can pull out that uh, demo again, I keep on. So funny, I never remember. This is also published somewhere. Um, this example. Uh, let's. I'm gonna stop the Astro one as well right now. And if I no, it's not. Even, is it running? Okay. Um. Shrink that. This is just very odd. Um, what is it like? NPM. So, PM, PM at latest dash D. 
I doubt. It's interesting. I probably. Okay. This is too bad because I like literally look at this exact example with with Nik Nikhil on the phone, like just build it with it like yesterday. So it's like it's like it's not the it's not it's not the version of this. It's there's just something very odd going on. Um, which is too bad because oh, no wrong one. Because it is just not playing ball for me right now. Okay. Um, and I don't have the link right now. It's on previous streams, but I don't actually remember. I mean, I, I could try it. Vinci. Notes. Like. <laughs> you see the local host. <laughs> references but not not the actual deployed version okay um th to answer your question though um the it, it, i believe he just used a, a template element very similar to what astro did i think he may, might have used a hidden div or something but it was the same concept he just put a dom element in the in the markup and then he he swapped it in it was very similar to the astro approach um, I, I believe he used, uh, array index as a way of like knowing which child to grab. You could also use the prop name. I, but essentially you just need to identify the specific, uh, block, so to speak, um, associated with the prop and then you can consume it when it, when it starts up. Uh, yeah, maybe restart the terminal. Yeah, that's fair. Just <laughs> these kind of issues always, always get me. I mean, the funniest thing is it, it feels like my NVM problem, right? Cause again, node version. <laughs> oh, this, this actually looks more promising. I doubt that PMPM is the reason for this, but. Yeah, there's problems. I don't know if I like use client, but there's problems with the import. The problem with doing the import was like people, it got really too specific. Like instead of being able to just be like, okay, I, I authored this component and you can use it, it. It became like this whole, like, do I want to use it this way? Which is nice, like Astro you know, where you make that decision on a per component basis, but it's a pain in the ass when you're anchor tag, you're doing that like every freaking place. It's funny, it actually downgraded Vite there, okay. Um. I'm not hopeful that this will actually work, but you know, whatever. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it really was PMPM. PM. <laughs> Let's make a note. <laughs> All right. And let's, let's, sorry, let's edit that note and add some, some stuff to it. Okay. See how this note expands? Right? Okay. Let's let's look at this before we expand it. Solid children. Header, whatever. And then he has div display none solid children some stuff. And then when we swap it. Oh, that's funny. 
he's actually just he just yeah he he actually wrapped it in place like where it was used that's interesting yeah i guess that makes sense yeah he he's literally just yeah he yeah it it, it makes sense he's just he just renders it where it's used and then uses display none to toggle it yeah, there's no swapping or moving anything around because it's it's just always there. If it, if this was like a show component, it wouldn't work. Um, essentially, in in the version, this is this is what tipped me off on all this stuff because I was like, okay, next step, let's just show hidden components, and I realized I'm like, it is really hard to know if something's been rendered or not. No, this version isn't double data because this version literally uh, doesn't serialize both paths like it it only shows what's shown if if this was using a show and it was display none like if, if i go back into this example this isn't double data because it doesn't solve the problem uh, is is the best way i can put it like if i go into this example let's go notes and i go note sidebar here and if instead of using um display none like that if i change this to like show is expanded yeah right yeah let's do that show when is expanded if we just change it like that now what's going to happen is page loads and then i'm going to expand it and you're not going to see anything <laughs> because it's just not there if i inspect as you can see there's this button, right? But there's, there's there's just nothing here, essentially. Like, the, the reason it's the, it, there's no double data is because it hasn't actually solved the problem. This is why I started looking into it, because I actually wanted to solve the problem, um, so to speak. Yes, yeah, server components can do this, and that's why I was saying I want to solve this. Astro can do this as well. No, 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 I, I, server components, they always send it. Oh, I mean, oh, you're saying if you do the show inside the server portion, then you're not, it's only going to, it's going to only send the resolved HTML back to the client. But my point is if the state is something that you toggle on the client, it can't know, um, uh, it, it, it can't know that because you pass the, you just pass the props in. It's going to send the whole thing, even in a server component scenario. I was playing with Next, doing similar experiments. I haven't solved it. I have an idea. That's what I was talking about earlier. But it is a hard problem. I understand very much why React uh, did it this way. I think the only actual solution that I can think of right now is don't send it in the HTML when you hit this case. Like basically choose one or the other. If you access the prop before serialization, you know, before flush, you know, that's good. You know, you don't have to serialize it, you know, sigh, sigh, you know, keep a sigh of relief there. But if you find yourself accessing, accessing a prop after serialization, after flush, then you're like, okay, I guess I can't send what I have here. I'm going to get the client to do it. Well, it's still not simple because like the, the the Astro solution is way or Astro's approach is way simpler. It doesn't solve the problem, but like I feel like it, the React way might be the simplest way or maybe not the simplest, but like you start you start understanding when you think about serialization. Yeah, how should I put it? I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. The React way is a is is very close to this is is a it's as close as simple as you can get to solving all the constraints. Um, I think that there's a lot of complexity here though, just to solve the problem in general. What I was going to say is 
the problem isn't just the serialization, but the server rendering, right? If you're not careful, you're going to server render everything twice too, right? That's why React does the two passes, because that way, when they run the RSC part of the rendering, they know they don't have to ever run it again. Like serialization and rendering, it's the same process. Um, whereas um, it's a little bit trickier to do that um, if everything is already like entwined. So there's that as well. Of course, if you know what's used and what's not used, then you avoid that problem. Unfortunately, knowing that is basically impossible in an async streamed world. So like, I don't know. I think this is, this is, the, this is why I'm interested in this problem space. Cause I think that we can do, we can do better. Like, I think that if we don't solve the double data here, we're not really solving the problem. And if we don't have the functionality that React is giving with server components, we're not really solving the problem. I've, I've tried to reduce the scope of that, you know, but I keep on coming back to the same need. So maybe that's like um, tunnel vision on my part, but it's, 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 it's why. Uh, yeah, data HK is a hydration ID we use for, for picking out um, the templates because JSX can be created in any order um, and the code runs at that point. So the order that stuff is created isn't necessarily the order it appears in the DOM. So we needed an ID system to match it up. Okay, that's probably enough on this. That was, I understand that was probably a bit of a lot, but I, I, I like time to time giving people updates on where the thinking is and the research is because I, I got to feel others thinking about this problem or hitting this kind of stuff. Maybe it's only framework authors, but I wanted to make it very clear to people um, from my perspective where I'm at right now, React server components are a logical place to get to when following this path all the way to, to follow the constraints. I'm not happy where that is, but I have to acknowledge that it's very sensible. You don't need this stuff to do SSR. SSR story is great. Uh, it's just like, there's a desire. It feels like we can do better. Um, and that's that, that, that's a challenging problem that basically all the solutions are kind of overly complicated. Yeah, I mean, I've thought of so many ways to do this. Like, like, what if the props themselves are resources and then, like, you just wait until the end of the stream to, to like, send any ones that, like, aren't accessed right away? Because, okay, check it out. Anything needed for hydration, any prop access... For hydration, it's going to be accessed during server-side rendering, presumably, right? So, like, when you're initially going over the page, hydrating or not, presumably, doesn't matter. What I'm getting at is, like, you know that anything needed for hydration for that part is going to be present. So you can kind of bank on that a little bit, but the problem is you, you want to be able to interact with the page while it's loading, <laughs> which, or you have effects that don't run on the server, you know, um, things like that. And obviously the effects that don't run on the server are probably not going to be rendering HTML like JSX. So like you, like you're probably fine there, but I, again, you could be streaming stuff and toggling the visibility of the part that's streaming. Um, 
to be fair, we bail out of streaming most of the time in those cases. But, I mean, I guess on the positive, you know, you know that it's there. So, I I think there's still room. Like, I might still be able to find even a greater simplification by making another assumption. The biggest problem when doing optimizations or architecture around optimization assumptions is at some point later you're going to realize, like, oh, I do need that. And it's a gap, and then you have to work to solve that gap. But I, I'm I'm hoping that we can get to a, a point where the assumptions are relatively reasonable, right? You're referencing Marco free very free. If it's so good, why isn't it spread well? I mean, it's because developers are shallow. I mean, that's really going to be it. I mean, th there is some t uh, some issues with like tooling historically because they had to build all their own stuff because they're so far ahead of the curve but mostly it's just like people you could see like twitter like people spend more time arguing about what syntax they have in svelte versus you know react or whatever versus like you know talking about like something mechanically important like composition like are these things composable or whatnot like I, I i think that in marco's case the language is so alien that people just kind of throw up in their mouth when they see it and that's the end of it they could literally be the best framework ever made in, in, you know and th like that will be the 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 result if you're if you're so smart why are you so poor yeah it's a bit like that yeah, Twitter's been lost to HTMX. That's funny. <laughs> it's fine. This is one of those things where you just don't say anything and then you you get to just smile later. <laughs> Greg, I'm trying to read what you're saying. It's basically the inverse of only serious props red in islands. Only serious island render props not red in island to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking about open source. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the, these are not easy problems to solve. Um, I'm just going to get set up here for this week in JavaScript. I don't think it's going to be a long one. Um, I, I'm still optimistic that we can find optimal solutions here. That's the research I'm doing. That's, that's what I care about. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about like, there's like two levels here, right? There's like the baseline level of what, um, we're working towards in terms of solid start, trying to get it like out of beta and what it's like what it's capable of and what solid's capable of and like 2.0 like that that whole level that gets me very excited about how things are now and how much better they can be but i think it's important to look at these longer term things as well because directionally these things never stay still um and you know i, I i've got i gotta give my props to as i said continued innovation across the frameworks, right? People give React a hard time about uh, server components, but it is a very reasonable approach to these things. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're going to see just how sure this is. Yeah, okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, give me two seconds. Just going to get the other stuff going. I wonder, did I actually bookmark anything this, this week? Oh yeah, I did bookmark one thing. That's funny. I'm probably gonna get tr in trouble for it too. <laughs> Maybe I should be careful about it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, yeah. I don't have much in solid news this week. 
other than somebody found a bottle with this all logo in it, but I, I don't think we need to talk about that. Okay. All right, let's let's get ready for this week in JavaScript. Let's get our banner going. Um, all right, perfect, perfect. This is going to be a short one. Unless anyone has anything else they want to say before we get started. But it looks like you guys have all caught up with me. All right, let's go. So we're going to talk about this week in JavaScript. And this week, like last week, maybe I wasn't paying much attention. I don't have an Anthony here to uh, prompt me on all the, the comings and goings. I've mostly kept my head down working on these really hard problems. You know, catch a few Theo videos, make sure he's still making good thumbnails. But other than that, you know, keep him pretty much to, to my own stuff. And But funny enough, surprisingly, if we talk about this week in JavaScript, I actually don't have much in the way of solid news. In fact, um, we're just continuing to work really hard um, on stuff. Uh, this might be the most exciting thing that I saw solid this week. No, to be fair, actually, I was in Europe and I saw a similar thing. Apparently, there is a water company whose logo is very similar to our logo. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that publicly. I don't know. It's probably bad thing, but saw that. The other thing that was actually interesting um, for those who actually met uh, is we did our first um, office hours with uh, this dot media on Thursday. It, or sorry, on Wednesday, it was an interesting event. There was only, you know, a couple dozen or not even a couple dozen, like just over a dozen people. So it was a small, cozy event where a lot of people got to ask the questions they wanted to ask ask some of those tough questions. I think it's a cool format. Mind you, most of you just say whatever you want on the stream chat anyways. So I'm sure you get enough questions answered. At least the people stay around to the end. The people who ask for stuff right at the beginning of the stream sometimes uh, uh, get missed out on that. So yeah, I don't know. Slow week on news, but not slow week on development. I'm very happy soon to share what I've been working on Solid Start, and I've been preparing my t talk for upcoming Beat Conference um, that I'll be speaking at. So uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot. Um, in terms of things out in the ecosystem that I saw that I bookmarked, this is probably the one that gets me in trouble. But Fred K. Scott decided, he's like, there's been zero commits to Gatsby repo in the last 24 days. Um which got a lot of people's attention. Zero merge pull requests. And he's, he was suggesting that it, ha it had to do with the Netlify layoffs uh, a month ago. And kind of true. I mean, uh, a number of the, there, there, there aren't that many people being paid to actively work on Gatsby. They'll work on frameworks and we have a lot of Gatsby customers in Netlify, but, um, Ward Peters, who one of the brilliant engineers at Gatsby, who's actually no longer at Netlify, um, basically straight up <laughs> called it dead. The whole staff has gone except one. It still works well, but don't expect major React 18 features to land. I can't speak for the truth of this. He was very close to the project, but if the, if if someone was to say that Gatsby the framework was officially dead. Um, it would be this. I'm glad Phil went in to actually clear this up. Fear not, Gatsby is vital to a great many of our customers. Updates reacting in Gatsby are the most eminent updates, but we're busy investing in platform primitives for stronger Gatsby. Yeah. So yeah, this this is this is part of um, Netlify's new, well, not new focus, but reinvested focus on looking at the primitives of the web to basically help all frameworks. Um, I've been involved a little bit in this process so far, and it's been exciting to see um, such energy around the senior engineering staff around like kind of inventing and creating again. I work on a great team at Netlify that does a lot of that creating. So I think there are improvements coming along the way. Um, you can definitely expect that. <laughs> Ward obviously is a, a much more suspect, but I, I, I think, I think there's an important topic here because React 18 changes are significant. 
um, especially with server components and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see, it, is, it will be interesting to see, but it, um, this, yeah, I mean, this is kind of the whole, this is the picture of what's going on right now, I guess, from both sides. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I don't know how many of you use Gatsby, but Gatsby does have a lot of users. If you look at their numbers, they're still, you know, reasonably high, high for the React meta frameworks. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I only got a couple more things here. First one is, um, response to the stream. And I, I think this is something that I talked about at the end of the last stream and Aiden kind of pointed out. He's, he, he's, he's like, he was turn, tuning into the stream and he said, an interesting framing for million JS was proposed. Million may push React to get better at performance. React holds principles that make it relatively slow at updating. With million React users start to question why that's the case. Devs will start exploring alternative faster frameworks, solid, felt, and the like. Users try First try million, get hooked on performance improvements. Next project they try out pre-act maybe, then spell, et cetera. Million becomes a gateway drug for faster frameworks. TLDR, million makes up us question the current state of UI performance and gets us to do something about it. Maybe this is a bit of an idealistic take on or take on Ryan's take, but take it as you will. No, he's right. That that was basically what I was suggesting um, to a certain degree. And um, I, I think there was a... I, I, there was some good discussion on this thread. I actually did co quite enjoy seeing different people's perspectives here. That people talking about, like, well, we have to change how React works. See React forget. <laughs> if devs choosing React, they probably don't care about performance anyways. I th the only reason I want to bring up this discussion here is that I, I do think that while React continues to innovate, they've explored one specific direction really far and done quite well with it. There's going to be trade-offs from the, those fundamental architectural decisions that lock in certain types of solutions. So as long as people can be creative on the other side and take that different directions i think there's a lot of potentials for alternatives and i think i think seeing stuff like uh millions really helps with that i i um yeah i want to yeah to talk to this one i don't know but it seems to me the contrary is true i think it confirms that react is perfectly fine and when you need to you can pull out stuff like million to solve particular performance issues yeah i want to talk about this one particularly um this isn't to be too harsh on million but unless you believe performance problem is actually more fundamental to reply because the idea here is million can make and i don't know if i emphasized this enough on the stream a few weeks back it can make the leafs faster it can make the diffing faster it can make the actual rendering sections faster but it doesn't change the re-render architecture the the way that state drilling props drilling cause tree re-renders right so like if you have a benchmark where you show a bunch of leaf nodes changing then millions improvements are drastically overemphasized compared um you know like it, it, in fact you know a fast vdom in that scenario is as fast as even maybe slightly faster than a, a reactive library but the impact to be able to include that has you know author, authoring cost right and this is you know, fine, you know, like you block things out. You have to be very conscious of the performance piece instead of authoring in a way that's like, how should I put it? Like always authored for, for, for performance, just the way you authored, you have to have to be like, go here blocks. Now it's interesting is millions working on auto compiler to identify those blocks, but the improvements are still going to probably be in the same range unless they're swapping out control flow. But even the control flow mechanisms here, if not reactive, still have unless they can isolate the state updates at a subcomponent level like signals do you still have this problem fundamentally so it's like i i think there's a reason svelte 5 you know in those fast benchmarks we saw you know 
from Rich. Uh, where is that? I think it was right here. He says this is what happened when True ADM joins your team. This is also what happens when you use signals to render instead of a VDOM, right? Or even not instead of a VDOM, instead of whatever Spelt was doing before. Like, this test is shallow. Millions is probably about the same score. But, like, I think we're seeing a fundamental shift here, much bigger than people are giving it credit for. People think of signals, they think of state libraries, they think of, oh yeah, I can use the pattern React and I can get a, you know, a bit more performant or whatever. This is so much bigger than that. I never like touting things as like a revolution. I'm always like, eh, you know, I don't have to come in and say this is way different, but it is. I think the reality is kind of setting in that the change of rendering style that Solid introduced was not an evolutionary React. It was actually revolutionary. And it's actually, in fact, impacting every single framework in the JavaScript e ecosystem. I probably marketed it wrong. You know, people are like, oh, you know, who wants incremental improvements? No, it's it, people who look, that take is is kind of missing the point. Um, and I think, as I, I said a couple of years ago, I think this is only going to continue to um, be more obvious as time goes on. Yeah, million plus Jota. Yeah, if you could combine some state atoms with some rendering thing. But like, what I'm getting at here is, I think that's what you, I, I, every React developer, maybe that's what they should do. But once you do that, like really how far are you at just picking up solid? Because you basically replace React's state solution with a bunch of atoms. You're not using React state. And you've now all the key rendering pieces are automated block. Like React's, you know how like React really didn't like signals in, pre, in React that preacted because they like they overrode the VDOM thing. At some point, if Million ever got popping up, React would probably find a reason for not liking Million because it messes with some underlying thing that they want to you know shift or change in the future. I think React Forget is actually the most obvious version of of that. It's it's React has a vision and a direction, and it, adding stuff, you know, state libraries, all this stuff. If React ever gets an interest in the zone that you are adding to with, you, it will just get, get displaced by their own thing. I think a perfect example of this is anyone trying to do like use make external or use external store type stuff after concurrent rendering and stuff. Like we can we can make MobX work in React still. You know we can do it, but like things have gotten to a very different zone. If you ever hear Tanner Lindsley go off about how you know trying to make this stuff work, like that's what it feels like to fight against it. And at a certain point, you're just like, why am I fighting against it? Why am I doing all these things to make it just work a different way? Not the way React should work, but just a different way. And it, it is very different. Uh, I think we use bind. Yeah, I think that's bind to the function execution. Yeah, I think we use, I think we use bind. Um, I figure it w faster, I think it was slightly indistinguishably faster from closure. The problem is like, um, th this This is, you can also use classes, um, prototype, which is a little bit, can be faster. I'd love to go back and revisit that. It hasn't made a huge difference really. Anyway, just, something to put out there. I, I feel like I've actually been underselling it. Like when you have something like Svelte, which is a different language, people are always like, wow, that's so revolutionary. You know, look how they changed the way we author stuff. And as I said, it comes down to like, why isn't Marco mo more popular? It's like, the, it's, it's that's the thing that catches the headlines. The truth of the matter is, I saw some benchmarks, I think it was. Um, let me see if I can find the tweet. Give me two seconds here. I, I think I posted it in a really findable place. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, let I should have bookmarked this. Here we go. Let's let's throw this one in here. Did any, anyone see this whole uh, 
uh, this benchmark here, right? React's felt view benchmark. Your eyes are not deceiving you. View three is currently performing better than Svelte and React. And it shows this table over time, right? Where it's like, you see React kind of going here, slowly going down. You see Re view making incredible improvements. And you see Svelte kind of just towing the line for the last three years, right? And I, I, this is based on the JS framework benchmark. And I, I was like, it's too bad they didn't put solid in here. This is clearly a, a view perspective one, but if you go back five years, actually we can kind of guesstimate because uh, Aiden said, oh, let's add million. It's so fast you can't see it. He like threw it on there. Solid would be like that line along the bottom here for the last five years. Like over time, frameworks will sh shift down. Like you, we're hitting a wall here. So things are not getting any faster um, really for this test. It's, it's, hit, it's the end of the line. But what I was trying to get at is that like eventually... Svelte 5 is going to come out and use rendering techniques, you know, similar to what Solid does and get in, it's also going to be on that line, so to speak, right? So, like, uh, I, what's the revolutionary thing? Is it the, is it the language or is it the mechanism? Well, maybe it's both, right? So, that... I, I don't need, need to drivel into that too f much f further. It's just, it's one of the things that I've kind of frustrates me somewhat about the dialogue around these things because it's kind of like if, if you're in a position where you feel the need to defend the incumbent repeatedly it usually means that you're gonna you're gonna miss the the changing of the wave like it, it's not gonna happen you're not gonna notice the thing until it's already happened which is fine i think a lot of people should be there i'm just saying like in general it's not particularly valuable yeah anyway Last thing for this week. Although, I, let me see if the chat has anything to say. Um, yeah, we used to be classes. I, 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 I was having problems with TypeScript at the time. That it was just really ugly to write the stuff without the TypeScript compiler changing the code in a way that was really nasty. So, like, I just, I got rid of classes purely for that solid 2.0 is actually written on classes like the new reactivity i just basically was so like i it's, I, th I forget what it was but like it was typescript was generating really ugly stuff back when it, back in the day i guess i like i had my target too low and i like it's because typescript can it encourages you to put stuff on as like member properties. So you'd be like class and then you'd like, instead of putting initializing stuff in the constructor, like you'd put it, the, if you, like I didn't have to, I could have initialized all the types in the class definition and then gone in the constructor and assigned all the initial values. But it made me write everything twice. Whereas like if you try and initialize the value without the constructor, then TypeScript, you know, would, previously generate this really ugly code because they didn't support uh like w w properties whatever you know like initializers do you think there's still room between the different portions including using wasm the floor for swapping rows and removing rows is very low left toes equals middle. It's the latest official. Well, that's interesting. Is is Russ Bindgen down there too? Fine. Let, let me look. JS framework benchmark. Funny thing I've been noticing is that the create. Yeah. Okay. So create's not bad. Um, let's look here. Swap. Do sledge. Let's see what, what what am I looking for here? Leptos. I think it's around here. Swap rows and remove rows. These two. 
uh, it's like in the same zone, I guess. Funny thing is like, we're a bit slower here. Um, where's million right now? 26, blocked almost fast. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Sometimes I w wonder how much of this at this point is run to time variance. Remove row has been a problem for solid, but I always assumed it was um, memory. Um, VDOM do a little better, but like we're getting so freaking tight here. <laughs> look at look at look at this stuff. Uh, I, I love this because vanilla is four hundred, so you can see that we're like for inserting ten thousand rows. We're like all within like the fronts within ten to twenty milliseconds of each other. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was tr the reason I was asking about was and bind gen was I was trying to see if like this was a consistent thing or. Yeah, I mean it's it's close. I, we're we're getting at a point where there's the differences are just so minute. I can't even. I don't know what's run variance. Yeah, I mean was yeah is the gap between Wasm, bind gen and vanilla getting smaller? Let's try that again. Let's go none. Vanilla, this is this is what you want to be paying attention to. Wasm bind gen. How close are we getting? That's a very bad select row for vanilla. Yeah, that select row is hurting it, but it is getting closer. I remember when it was more like 110. For the longest time, solid was faster than what wasm bind gen. I think now we're at a point where Wasm, the gap is getting very, very, very close. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Last thing for today. Um, Mark Grabansky, if you don't know him, or Grabansky, I probably said his name. I'm probably, he's the guy behind Front End Masters. Um, I do have a course there just to kind of give you a heads up. But he he did a poll, essentially, where he's like, hey, let's, uh, what do you guys want me to talk about? He likes doing vanilla JS. I, I, I remember this after the course, he was really happy with the first morning session on my course because I took really fundamentals vanilla JS teaching approach. And he was just like, yeah, you made it make sense to me. And he was like, okay, everyone wants to hear about reactivity. I am literally going, he, he talks about 18 different ways people use the term reactivity. I mean, his idea was like to kind of be a compendium. Like I might not agree that all these are react like in the reactive in the same sense of the word, but if someone says reactivity, he basically is like, okay, I'm pulling that in. And it's, it's thorough. He talks about pub sub patterns, obviously observer pattern talks about using proxies on objects. These are the basic ones, right? But, you know, then he starts talking about like observables and RX. Good description there, signals. He uses my pseudocode from the, it's not pseudocode, it actually runs from the, uh, from the, from the course. And then again, <laughs> more observable react. This, it's, he talks about a lot of rendering patterns, uh, mutation observers. He One thing he doesn't talk about here, I guess, is the way Solid does rendering. Um, but it's kind of self-evident. If you just run effects to update the DOM, um, you know, like this approach to reactive rendering and UIs, I'm, I, I think is based on simply the concept of is this using proxies? Oh no, this is blowing away the other DOM. Yeah, and he's talking about diffing. I mean, yeah, I don't know. This, this, this is this is. I, I, I read through the whole article and I was very impressed that he pulled the the kind of a classic sense of the stuff and got all the way down to like different patterns people use in stuff, all implemented with vanilla JS. So this is a very good, like wide look. If you're ever kind of interested in like 
when someone says reactive, what, the, what are they talking about? He kind of categorizes and he, and he basically shows you how to implement a basic version of all the different forms of reactivity, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, Observer Pattern or PubSub, these are, these are classic because they don't go away. Like, you know, we, we build other abstractions on top of these things. I think it's still kind of like, Core, I'm not, I'm not degrading any of, of these things here, you know, for everything from down to like event emitters, um, right? The whole idea is how do you create systems of data that change? I, I love this kind of definition, right? Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people who watch this stream probably know already a decent amount about a lot of these topics, but I think this article is like for the intended audience is really cool because it's like, you know, it just it gives a little context. It can be kind of, you know, maybe a lot if you're getting into it, but it, these are kind of examples let, let you see like the different ways people mean, like for example, reactive scrolling, intersection inverted, animation and game loop, request animation framework. It's like, these are all really good examples of how to do change detection. Um, and some of these change detection examples, like there's even a few more basically play into like other uses um so yeah I, I think this is good for a wide breadth kind of shallow look but it's it, being all implemented in vanilla js just makes it really understandable so very cool article um worth checking out yeah and honestly that's about it um Unless anyone has any cool news they they saw this week, I'm I'm probably gonna wrap it up here because uh, I got some uh, poke bowl to eat um, coming up here. Old school TypeScript. I don't know what this is referring to, but I'm just gonna put that up here. Was there TypeScript in the article? Maybe that's. I kind of glazed over that part. I just, I guess I'm getting to a point where I don't even read TypeScript anymore. All right. Anyway, let's see. Is anyone streaming that I know uh, right now doing anything interesting? I don't know. I okay. Curious. Will there ever be solid native, solid, but for iOS and Android? Um, not as an official effort. I think it takes way too much work um, to do this. That being said, and I talked about this a bunch last stream. Uh, towards the end is because last stream, if, if I go, like, you can, if I go to solid account, there was a whole bunch of pe uh, people sharing their, their stuff here. Like had to try rib app with solid and native script, try it, uh, tor solid and Tori. I think what we're going to see is some of these like more agnostic general solutions. Cause this is like a hard problem. Not everyone's going to build a react native. We actually have a wrapper of react native, but then you kind of like lose the solidness of it. I think you're gonna see a lot more of this. And I think I'm excited in the future to see if I can nail down one of the, these uh, native script or Tori, um, you know, here, native script. We absolutely love someone look forward to putting in more production professionals abroad. Like I wanna get someone from that side or someone who's played with this stuff on stream and we can talk and look at it. I don't saying it's equivalent to React Native, but I, I think that uh, this is a place where the community is going pretty, hard because solid characteristics make it really good for performance, low memory, minimal rendering, and we have universal renderers and stuff like, so it's completely doable. It's just a matter of like putting the time in and, you know, if you know anything about React Native, they, they have, I think more people work on React Native than work on React. Like it's just been a phenomenal effort over the years. So when you consider cross company stuff like Microsoft's, you know, I don't mean like work like build application, I mean building React Native. I think it's a giant effort uh, that spanned years. In fact, I was talking to some people who were working on it and they were saying that like the React Native that everyone uses is actually different than they've been rewriting it again at Facebook. Like it, we just had an update, I think a year or two ago, where it was like kind of considered like a new version and an update rewrite almost. They've been actually rewriting it lo longer than that and trying to feed stuff back out of the public community. Uh, the, 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 apparently like React Native is, internally in meta is even further and than what we get it in the public and they've been trying to figure out how to kind of bridge that gap over time it's it's an incredible amount of effort
next next week's astro announcements yeah i mean that's why we had the astro stream we uh, earlier so yeah august 30th um is the release i imagine if it's anything like astro in the past they'll do several days of announcements and push so i'm looking forward to it that'll give us uh, a little bit of excitement next week bun yeah is coming up to another what two weeks september 7th they did a 0 0.8 release recently which has support for some meta framework solid didn't get in it unfortunately so i'll start but um, it'll it'll come soon. Yeah, V1, I think it's what, September 7th-ish? So, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, 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 this is a good time for releases and I think the next couple of weeks we'll have more of these kind of announcements and stuff. Um, so, lots and lots of fun. All right, I think with that, I am going to call it a stream. Thank you, everyone, for um, joining me today. Um, just, uh, sorry, I'm going to check Twitch one more time to see what I want to do there, um, so to speak. Uh, if there's... Uh, it's fine. You know what? You guys can figure out your own streams. It's all good. Have a good weekend i got some food to eat till till uh oh right before i forget next week there is no stream um but the following week coming back um i there will be a stream um i'm still putting on some details but i believe i will be doing a stream on nitro with special guest core maintainer of on js talk about that kind of stuff so September 7th or 8th, I gotta double check the dates, um, we'll be coming back with another s stream. Like and subscribe, of course. All right.